It all ends here. The world's finest triathletes have pushed themselves to the limit in London, in Munich and in Jersey. Their aim to get to the start line here in Malibu. The beautiful Pacific coast is the destination for our spectacular finale to the 2021 Super League Triathlon Championship Series. Using the show. And she takes out the very first championship race of 2021. Vince is putting in absolutely everything behind him, but it's not going to be enough. The Falcon is going to fly in London. Here we go. Times two non-stop. In the Olympic Park in Munich, Jess Learmont is your champion once again. And running to the victory again is Vincent Lewis. The Frenchman does the job. We are back in Jersey. Jess Learmont, the winner in London, the winner in Munich, and now the winner in Jersey. Johnny Brownlee and Alex G, the two Brits. Who's going to do it? It's going to be Alex G. Wow! What racing! Yes, welcome to beautiful Malibu. You might think that a little trip to California is a decent reward for a month's hard graft for our athletes, but there is plenty more punishment to come for them today over the next two and a half hours on your screens as our athletes compete for $1.25 million prize pot. They may comprise some of the best in the world, but the reality is it's so tough that some of them will not even finish the course today. With me, a current Olympian in Rich Murray and four-time world champion, Tim Don. Tim, we're going to start today with the women's race. Your Eagles teammate, Jess Learmonth, has been absolutely dominant so far in this series, but that doesn't mean she's nailed on to win the championship here today, does it? No, absolutely. I mean, she's gone three from three, but the Everyone's hungry for that win, and it's so close with Georgia Taylor-Brown, and, um, you know, anything can happen. I think the swim conditions are going to play to some people's strengths and weaknesses, so that's going to be interesting, and this course is fierce. It's technical, it's fast, it's, it's, it's something that Jess really relishes racing on, so, yeah, I, I think she's, she's going, to, going to have a good race today. Speak to me a bit more, actually. Let's talk a little bit more about those, those uh, conditions out there in the sea behind us, Rich. What difference is that going to make? We've seen it's quite choppy out there. Yeah, so you can see just behind us here, there's some big waves coming in. There's a bit of chop as well. It's about 18, 90 degrees Celsius. And yeah, it's going to be very, very tough. It's going to, going, to, going to separate the athletes. Some aren't used to doing a beach start. So there might be some, you know, some changes of the order when it comes to the swim side of things. All right, we're taking a look just now at the leaderboard for the championship series that we, we can see there. Jess and Georgia up top. They're, they're competing for the first place today. But... In terms of third place, guys, there's three, two Brits, Beth Potter, Vicky Holland and Katie Zafiris. These are the ones to watch for that, Tim. Who do you reckon is going to come out on top today? You know, I would love to say Vicky, but I think Katie's on home ground here in America. Um, she's loving the, the surf conditions and she's slowly been building. I think she's, she's going to have a good race here. Beth Potter, on the other hand, you know, she's a phenomenal runner, done some amazing run splits. But this swim, you know, if she has a good swim, it's all to play for, but it's definitely going to favour Katie and Vicky being the stronger swimmers. And there's some kind of home advantage that we're going to talk about in a little, in a moment, because right now we're going to get down to Annie Emerson, who's with one of our athletes. Well, we had the docks in London, we had the beautiful lake in Munich, the wonderful marina in Jersey and here in Malibu we have the most amazing <laughs> the 2021 Super League Series leader Jess Learmont what can we expect to see from this swim well Christ I got in at the uh, swim warm up and I got absolutely battered so just look at the draw basically so when we're coming back in if you get could be, could be walking. Uh, yeah, give it a whirl. Great stuff. Back to you, Kate. Thanks, Annie. So that is the championship series leader. But hey, we need to talk. There's some things that's going to be mixing this up today because we have some wild cards in action. And what a pair of wild cards they are, Tim. 
Uh, they are amazing. I mean, Flora Duffy is the current Olympic champion. Technically on the bike, she is just a master. Um, she's also been training in America, so she hasn't got the jet lag, which lots of the European athletes flying over. Lucy Charles off the back of a, a world title um, last weekend. She might bring some fatigue into the race. But again, you know, she's a fierce competitor, both amazing swimmers and strong on the bike. And we're just looking now at the Championship Series team lineups so, because this is uh, making a change in the Sharks and also in Annie's Cheetahs. The thing about this, though, is that you, you might expect, Rich, that these, these women will be competing to win this entire race. Yeah, definitely. You know, they've, they've come in late. They're obviously the wild cards as well. But, you know, they are some of the strongest races. You know, Flora Duffy uh, and the likes of uh, Lucy Charles as well. Uh, they're definitely going to be the ones to change the game today. And I think it's going to be they're going to be putting it up. And it's going to be a very different females race compared to the last weekend's racing, I think. Yeah, and let's give you a chance to wallow in a bit of glory, shall we, Tim? It's your female eagles who have been absolutely blazing a trail and look like it's an unassailable lead for your guys. Uh, never say never. It's not over <laughs> till it's over. But absolutely. 79 points, everybody. 79 <laughs> points ahead. No, but you can't rest on your laurels. I think, um, you know, we've had we've had some great races and also tactically as well with Victoria getting those early points in the swim and the bike and then Taylor being, and Vicky being so consistent. I mean, we've got three women in the top 10 and I couldn't ask for more. They've performed absolutely above and beyond my expectations. Really happy with the Eagles. It's exciting to see what they're going to produce today and it's not long to go now because I think we can now get you down to the start line and to your commentators for the race. Thank you, Kate. So here we are, London, Munich, Jersey, and it all comes down to this Guys, in Malibu, think, California, yeah. racing so for that beautiful Bogoslavski trophy over. we saw there with Kate. And here is the Eliminator format. It is three triathlons, back-to-back, four-minute breaks in between. Swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. So normal order. But you see those red numbers there? After the bike discipline, we're going to lose one athlete eliminated and then two at the end of the run. One and two in stage two as well. And then the shootout in stage three. All the jerseys are on the line. Or the short shoot is on offer as well today. And it's double points. You can see on the right, if you finish in the top five, you pick up 20, 18, 16, 14, and 12. So there'll be plenty of changes in the championship order. They are on the beach. There is a big crowd here in Malibu. And it is time for our final women's race of the championship season. Eagles closest to the screen. There is Jess Learmont, Vicky Holland, Taylor Spivey and Vittoria Lopez. They've been so dominant. And they will look to lead out again. Fair bit of swell here and off we go. And it was the Rhinos who got off quickly. And into the water they go. We've talked so much about what it'll be like to have this swell. And there's a fair bit of chop and swell pouring in. And you can already see... Timing-wise, there is no choice but to just go for it, no matter what is happening. And as they head out into the beautiful bay here in Malibu, this swim could be all important. Let's not forget Lucy Charles Barclay, widely regarded as the best swimmer in triathlon, is in this field, fresh off a 70.3 World Championship win just last week in Utah. But Jess Learmonth has been almost unbeatable. In fact, she has been unbeatable in the swim and she is sitting on a three-point championship lead. Also, don't discount Flora Duffy. She is the Olympic champion. She is the world champion. She's probably the most complete triathlete out there as they come together. And it looks like at the bottom of your screen, I think that's Cassandra Beaugrand in the black. That classic stroke from the French woman who came back to a third position after a tough opening couple of weeks in Super League. She'll get to the boy first alongside one of the Sharks as well as they make the turn. And timing-wise, didn't look too bad in terms of what kind of swell was rolling in. Learmonth at the top of that group of five, just tucking in. And that's got to be Charles Barclay ahead of her in the Sharks. Purple. So, as we expected... Charles Barkley out first. Learmonth, well, she hasn't decided to take the feet yet of Charles Barkley, but she's about to. Meanwhile, over on the other side is Bo Grant. Perhaps Zafiris there on home turf on the left in the yellow. And I think Sophie Colwell is the other one. 
But Charles Barclay is out first. Barkley from Learmont and Colwell, I think. So it looks like three Brits out the front here in America as we welcome into the commentary box Annie Emerson and Richard Murray. And Annie, you look happy because there's three Brits out front by the looks of it. Well, I'm getting used to it, Will, I can tell you that. It, it, is a, it has been a remarkable run for the British athletes in the Super League series this year. But this swim is something else. I was fortunate to be down on the start and watch the athletes warm up. And some of them were getting absolutely thrown about. You can see, we'll see them coming in now. And it's crucial to get the right wave because if they don't, the athletes can get sucked back out again. Yeah, definitely. You can see Lucy Charles, I think you said, up in, up in the front. And they're actually a lot closer together than you would expect with some of this chop here and a bit of the waves. But yeah, coming in is the real crucial part of the swim. They want to check where the waves are and really try and get up onto one of these waves and, and can really help them to get out and to try and get a little bit of a break here coming into the transition area. Well, Learmonth and Colwell look like they're fighting each other for that second position. And no one looks like they're going to catch a wave. Those waves are breaking very close to the shore, although one comes through and gives everyone a hand at the back of the pack. Lucy Charles, though, will come on to the dark sands of Malibu, first of all, and make that run up to transition. So first time she's been in Super League Championship Series. She did very well in the Super League Arena Games. And they make that run up and they head out onto three laps of the... Bike course, I think it was Taylor Brown there who momentarily dropped the goggles. And up they come. So, of course, the 90-second rule is in effect as well as those championship, uh, as those eliminations. It's Victoria Lopez, not Learmont, who was in the water there. And the battle braids on Lucy Charles. She always has them when she races and she heads into transition first. And it looks like she will pick up the short shoot. So, the short shoots for the first out of the swim heading over the bike mount line and Lucy Charles Barclay has the swim short shoot. Victoria Lopez comes over second. She picks up four bike points and into the railing goes Charles Barkley. Well, I can tell you what uh, we're looking, looking down here. We're right in front of the transition area. It's absolute chaos. It's really, really tight. But the athletes that are familiar with this uh, this setup have managed to have smooth transitions. But it was Lucy Charles Barkley. He really looked like she wasn't happy getting on her bike. Yeah, she looked like she had a bit of a struggle there, jumping on their bike, almost like Georgia Taylor-Brown in the last round, a tiny bit with her, with her mount. But they're getting into the shoes here as well. And it'll be interesting to see whether they, they stay together here. And yeah, I think there are a couple of eagles also up in that group for, for the team's over, overall classification. Well, I thought it was Colwell. It's actually Flora Duffy, and she heads straight to the front, the uh, Olympic champion. Victoria Lopez sitting in third position. And if I am correct, she has overtaken Jess Learmont then to win the swim jersey overall. So Jess Learmont has been denied $20,000 and it goes to Victoria Lopez. That's unconfirmed. That's my mathematics on the paper here, but we'll get the, um, we'll get the, well, it says Victoria Lopez and Jess Learmont were there. So it's gonna be close with Learmont in fifth. I'll get you the confirmation of who won the $20,000 very, very shortly. But at the moment, at the front, sits Flora Duffy and they seem to have just put a little gap there into Jess, uh, into Lucy Charles Barkley, Rich. Yeah, that looks like it might, might have been through the, the first few corners there or getting into the shoes. And I think Flora Duffy got onto the front there and she put the hammer down immediately. So you can see she's coming in with, with fresh legs here. Uh, your current Olympic champion as well. And yeah, she's definitely uh, going to be one that's going to stretch things out here if the girls don't, don't watch out. And, and I think that the big news here, Will, is that uh, GTB, Georgia Taylor-Brown, is not in this lead group. I think that it was Learmont who, uh, you can just see them going through now, there's Learmont Lopez, and it is, of course, Flora Duffy, the current Olympic champion, Lucy Charles Barkley, just behind her. And just seeing, actually, now Georgia Taylor-Brown going through our pictures here. We are right in front of transition. She looks like she's battling to get onto Lucy Charles' wheel. Perhaps they'll be able to do something together. But we know that Charles Barkley is going to have a bit of a tough time on this technical course. She is, of course, used to racing in straight lines. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, it's quite tricky coming from the long course events into this type of stuff. This is the first time we've ever seen Lucy Charles Barkley racing in this really, really tight, short format of racing. So it's going to be very, very tough. I think the motorbike is a little bit here in the way, but I think they're just trying to uh, get, get this group together and, and start working as best they can. 
Yeah, there's uh, there's battles all across uh, this field. Flora Duffy obviously leading. Uh, Jess Learmonth and Victoria Lopez are your top three. So two Eagles and the world champion uh, sit at the front. Lucy Charles Barclay ahead of Georgia Taylor Brown, who's moved up. Uh, so those two Brits working together. Katie Zafiris, in terms of the last spot on the podium, is a three-way battle. She is currently in sixth position ahead of Simone Ackerman, Sophie Colwell, Alari Azane, Non Stanford, uh, Valerie Bartellamy, Beth Potter is another one who's aiming for the podium. And so is Vicky Holland, who's back 18 seconds at the moment. So Katie Zafiris at home in the US for the first time in Super League uh, is in pole position for that. But uh, Jess Learmont also sitting exactly where you want to be. Uh, and he is right behind Flora Duffy and trying to put some time into the rest. And you can see there, I think it's now Georgia Taylor Brown looking behind her and going, I need some help catching up to these three women. There's Katie Zafiris and Lucy Charles in that second pack of three ahead of the big pack. And Georgia needs some help. Well, and of course, it is so tight at the top of the table. Three points separate Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmont. Um, and that's a tough day for Georgia Taylor-Brown. It really is. But I think the thing is here, and I think you agree with me, Rich, that Jess Learmont is used to racing like this. She's used to racing with Flora Duffy and, and doing a sort of two up together. That's exactly what they're doing. Victoria Lopez getting a nice free ride there. She won't be doing too much work, nor will the girls expect her to do, because they're ones that are much more accurate when it comes to the technical parts of this course yeah i think it's you know it's quite a quite a usual affairs at the front with uh, with flora duffy and jess lim but they've done this before many many a time in different formats it racing that type of stuff so this very very tight cornering and stuff really does suit flora duffy it's been very interesting to see that flora doesn't have her tri bars on her bicycle which is one of the first times we haven't seen that which is quite an interesting choice but yeah they're definitely uh, working very very well together here yeah, and they know that uh, this is the this is the make or break part uh, of the race. I think they uh, it is obviously eliminates a format the style of racing So people get eliminated each round and yeah, they just want to make sure they're staying up in the pointy end Gillian Sanders Cassandra Bogran are, uh, are there as, as potential eliminations at the end of this bike leg and Of course the other short shoot is on offer and it won't go to Lucy Charles Barclay as it stands It'll go to one of these three women and it'll happen at the mount line so after they get off the bike, they've got to go through transition. Whoever has the best transition out of these three will pick up the short shoot. Let's have a look at how Flora Duffy does this. She's never raced in Super League before. Jess Learmont has picked up just about all the short shoots. You can see as they go past it there, it's this time it's around halfway around the course. So there will be time for our athletes to run back up if they concede that. And confirmation that Victoria Lopez picked up the four points to Learmonth's two. They finish on 16 apiece, but Victoria Lopez gets the $20,000 because she finished higher in Malibu. So congratulations to her. She's put it out there on the line continually. She should pick up another uh, 15000 US dollars by being part of the Eagles team if the Eagles do indeed win overall, which it looks like they're going to. So very good month for her and a very good month for Jess Learmonth, which might be spoilt the perfect four from four by Flora Duffy coming in after a nice break off the back of the Olympics. She hasn't done too much. She looks like she's very fresh and, of course, not jet-lagged as well as the others have come from Europe. And they're going to head in. And whoever comes over the mount line first is going to pick up the bike points and the short shoot. And at the moment, Jess Learmont is in the box seat to pick up that 20 grand. She's already three points ahead of Georgia Taylor-Brown. And Georgia is not going to be able to cross that mount line ahead of her. Learmonth gets the shoes on. She is going to pick up this short shoot. Is she? No, she's not. Duffy's going to steal it, and she does. So the two wildcard athletes pick up the two short shoots, and Duffy is out first, sharp as ever. Well, it's incredible, isn't it? Fourth place. They've already lost 15, just under 15 seconds to our three race leader. Just goes to show it was really Duffy that was doing all the work. But nice for Learmont, who we've seen on the front virtually every single bike ride in Super League Series this year. Learmont's getting a nice little toe from Duffy. She's one second behind, but the main chase packs are 15 seconds behind our race leaders. Yeah, this is going to be a very tough. I, I think, uh, George, uh, I mean, uh, just Learmont, this is the first time she actually hasn't been in the driver's seat of this of the style of racing the last three weekends so it's gonna be quite interesting for her but flora definitely put a hell of a lot of work in there uh, george taylor brown just coming past a short shoot here as well uh, and so she's she's probably going to be moving her way up a little bit but i think these girls want to stand up the elimination and definitely want to move up uh, towards the end of this run so we saw someone get eliminated uh, just then we'll confirm that 
But at the front, look at this, Flora Duffy coming into this style of racing, absolutely laying the hammer down. She is three seconds ahead of Jess Learmont, Victoria Lopez, Georgia Taylor Brown. We saw the gap back there to Valerie Bart Bartellamy. Katie Zafiris is sitting in that pack, and there's a lot of women in that pack, in fact. And there you go. Confirmation, Victoria Lopez, there she is. Is that a smile? Is it a grimace? It doesn't matter. $20,000 into her pocket. And Georgia Taylor Brown leading the chasing pack, and she's going to need all the help that she can get in this one. But let's not forget that after this swim, bike, and run, where all this money is decided and the short shoots, it's about conservation. They're going to all start in a mass start again in stage two. So the fact that Flora Duffy is leading only gives her a few seconds more rest because that four, sec four minute break starts ticking, that clock starts ticking as soon as Flora comes across the line. But there's no real need now that she has won the short shoot for Flora Duffy to win this triathlon. It's about conservation for her. And Jess knows it too. She was waving to someone just then. She hasn't got the short shoot. There's nothing else to race for at the front. The eliminations are done at the back. We are going to get another elimination at the end of this first lap of the run and another at the second. But now it's about conserving for these women before that shootout comes in stage three. Well, absolutely. We just saw her. Uh, you, you talked about whether she needed to, you know, put in a big effort or not. But Flora Duffy ran through past our commentary box. She looks very, very relaxed. She does look like she's out on a little sort of Sunday jog at the moment. And I think you pointed out, yeah, they do want to maximise the amount of time they have in between this round and the next round. And there's quite a long run down to the beach, which is a little bit tiring. So obviously, the more time that Flora Duffy has and Jess Learmont, the easier it is. You know, they can get their heart rate down and get to the start compose themselves which a lot of these other athletes are going to have to rush it a lot more yeah i think that's what kind of flora duffy's doing it's interesting because she is you know she's in the driver's seat here but she doesn't need to push that hard all she needs to do is literally come across the line but i think she's you know she's used to racing hard and she, and she knows that uh, the girls behind her will get less rest so she definitely is you know making sure that she stays right up, up there at the front where they they come around here just still in second position and uh, george is taylor moving up here into third place yeah, there are your two championship protagonists, neither of whom have a short shoot because they have been brutally stolen by the wild cards. The 70.3 world champion Lucy Charles and, of course, the Olympic and world champion Flora Duffy in the orange there with the Bermudan flag on the shoulder. So those two women behind, neither of whom have a short shoot in their pocket. There's three points in between them. What Georgia Taylor Brown needs to do to win this is... To, and I look at my permutations here, she needs to finish two places ahead of Jess Learmont. So because there's two points between each of the top five, she needs to put someone between herself and Jess Learmont. Jess Learmont just needs to finish either one place behind Georgia or ahead of Georgia, and she will be your championship winner. So those two there, well, they know that it's a long game. They've lost the short shoots, and now it's just a pure race with the pack behind them and Flora Duffy ahead. Yeah, it's actually interesting to see that Georgia just passed Jess here as well. And I think the likes of Non Stanford and Vicky Holland probably coming up just behind them as well. So they've definitely run a few seconds in on this on, on this on this run course. They're definitely moving up. Do you think though Jess she has nothing to lose, I guess, now apart from getting herself a little bit more time to get down to the swim start across the sort of quite wide long beach? Do you think she's just sitting like she's just saying, I'm just gonna sit in here now? Yeah, maybe. I think you know, sometimes it's a bit of a psychological thing. I mean, you know, you want to be ahead of the next one, you know, regardless of whether it makes a difference or not. But I think, you know, as athletes, you get used to your stride. And we've got Flora Duffy just coming through the transition area here where they do they, they're going to turn around, come back towards uh, the finish area. And, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, they're, all, they're all through here, more or less to the, to the next round. And now they're all about just saving energy and being smart. Yeah, it's Flora Duffy in front. And behind her, four Brits, Georgia Taylor-Brown, Jess Learmont, Non Stanford is there, and Lucy Charles Barclay. It doesn't matter too much at the front of the race. I can confirm for you that Gillian Sanders was eliminated on the last lap. And it looks like Alaria Zane will be the next to be eliminated after that. Flora warms down after the first and the clock starts ticking on that four minutes. And she knows that she needs to get herself composed and ready to go again. And we've seen eliminators in the past that it's all about that cumulative effect of not having as much rest that really starts to hurt when you get into stage three. Big crowd here in Malibu, fantastic to see. Very different from racing in Europe. Malibu Triathlon obviously has a long, long history here. 
on the Pacific Coast. Been around for 30 odd years. There's plenty of age groupers as well who are getting involved. And look at those names down near the bottom there. Sophie Colwell finished 20 seconds back. Victoria Lopez ended up finishing 20 seconds back. That's one second for every thousand dollars. She doesn't ma ma doesn't matter to her. <laughs> Cassandra Bogran is also 20 seconds back. Yuko Takahashi was down there. I think she survives elimination. I think we've lost Alaria Zane. I know Takahashi has gone as well. Is uh, is what I'm just hearing. So Alaria Zane and Yuko Takahashi, uh, their day is done. And so we have 17 women left in this race before we head again into the next one. And I think that shook out just about how we, we thought it would. Yeah, I, th I think so. I mean, I'm just watching the girls now frantically getting their transition areas back together again. And I think it's difficult to appreciate really what is going through their minds because you've got to be really calculated, really precise here in these transitions, making sure you leave everything set up. But at the same time, you've just finished a really hard effort and you're also thinking about getting back down to the beach to get started again. Yeah, I mean, the heart rates are still pumping, you know, almost near maximum when they when they get to the transition area and they don't want to make a mistake here. You know, one little mistake in this transition area, if you forget to put your shoes right here, if you forget to, you know, put your elastic laces on your bike shoes, all those things, we've got Rachel Palmer here busy just putting your stuff together and grabbing some water and heading on down. You've got to keep hydrated in the heat here. All right, we're setting up again for stage two and we have already lost three women at the back. We'll keep you appraised of these and hopefully see some eliminations at the back of this second stage as it gets a little bit more frantic. So they're definitely going, they have very, very little time between you. Know, you can see the girls coming across, literally almost sprinting down to the start. They don't want to be the one that, you know, that, 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 that ends up being behind. We have got one of the people who's been eliminated, Gillian Saunders here with us and with me and Tim, I should say. And Gillian, how was the pace out there? That looked incredible. Yeah, I mean, we have some big surf out there, which is really exciting. I love the big surf. It always, you know, adds a different dimension. So that was fun, you know, playing in the waves and everything. Um, yeah. Is that what it was like, playing in the waves? I think yesterday was a bit of playing in the waves. Today was obviously more serious, but um, I was happy with my swim. Um, but yeah, obviously didn't finish the way that I wanted to do. I was eliminated at the end of the bike section. Yeah, so having crashed last week was a bit tough technically for me. Really tough, and the pace that the girls are setting out there is, is, seems like an incredible one. Yeah, literally. I mean, we have all three Olympic medalists here. We've got Lucy Charles, 70.3 world champ, so, you know, absolutely incredible field. All right, bad luck, Gillian. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Okay, as we head into stage two, confirmation in the final run that Georgia Taylor Brown picked up four points to Jess Learmonth three, so she just holds off uh, Learmonth and takes the run jersey and twenty thousand US dollars. So she's currently sitting on sixty-five thousand US, whereas and Jess is sitting on eighty thousand US. And we head into stage two, three more eliminations in this one. And off they go, 17 women back into the water and into the chop of the Pacific. And we saw Lucy Charles do so well the first time around. Let's see who's wasted a little bit. Let's see who's kept their energy as they head out to that first boy once again. And I keep saying it, but that cumulative effect of racing, then having a four minute break, which is an awkward break, Annie, in terms of warming down, suddenly being out of that race zone, then having to get yourself back up, get into it. it. Used to be two minutes, we make it four minutes. There's just a little bit of a mental game in this one now. Oh, it really is. I cannot imagine what it's like. You know, a lot of the athletes would have been pretty maxed out. We saw Jess and Flora quite relaxed coming in, but a lot of the others would have been heart rate really high. And then, as I said earlier, they've got to be really thinking ahead. And it's not an easy thing to do, to, to, to think while your heart rate is really high. Um, and you've got to be really precise, as Rich said, not to mess anything up in transition. What's interesting in this swim, as we saw in the last one, is they're actually staying quite tight and close together, Rich, which has surprised me a little bit. Yeah, you definitely expect it to be a little bit more waves, but I think it was a little bit the waves are kind of pushed to the side a bit, so they're, they're actually sticking together. And I think the salt water is giving them a lot of buoyancy as well, so it's almost like a wetsuit effect a little bit. They're around the first boy here as well, but then this is where kind of the carnage happens here on the inside. Luckily, there's only about two or three wide, but it can still end up getting pretty nasty. Now, I'm trying to 
peek out the front there, Will. Is that Flora Duffy taking this Flora. swim out? It is, isn't yeah, it? I think it's Flora Duffy, <laughs> Jess Learmont, and uh, Georgia uh, and Lucy Charles. Sorry. And I think Victoria Lopez is in there as well, leading from what could be Cuddy Zafir. It's tough to see uh, in this chop and the reflection off the water, a little bit different. And that's why we like to do things a little bit differently here in Super League. Uh, at the back as well, and I think right at the back, near the back there is Beth Potter. Uh, she could be a high profile casualty as this continues this race for third between Zafiris, Potter and uh, Vicky Holland and we've got all eyes on that one because of course there's a place on the podium for it and they've all worked so hard across the course of this uh, this month to stand on the podium at the end is the ultimate goal and of course 25,000 US dollars is not too bad either either Bo Grand is another one we need to watch as well who you know obviously we've seen her dominate so much Cassandra Bo Grand uh, in Super League over the past few years but she really struggled in the opening fortnight came back to a really good uh, third position off the back of a great run uh, in Jersey but she's a little bit down the time sheets as well yesterday at the course familiarization there was a bit of swell I think it intimidated some of the athletes who are not used to doing this kind of thing uh, as a, you know, obviously it's a completely different set of skills. Uh, some athletes do a bit more, some athletes do a bit less. It's not as bad as it, is, as it is today, but for a smaller athlete or a slighter athlete, getting through that chop can be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, it looks like they have a tiny bit of a split. You're almost six goals just up in the front here, and that's that's going to be tricky getting up onto the bike. But I think they they, they definitely it looks like they're all a lot more compact than you would have expected them to be coming out the, the water. What do you think of it, Annie? Oh, absolutely. They're they're sort of on top of one another virtually. No one's got a real clean break as we've seen previously. It is only 300 meters, and it is Flora Duffy who's out of the water first. All right, Duffy, used to this kind of open water swimming. I think that's Learmonth and T Charles Barkley. Let's see if Lucy Charles can have a better transition this time around. There's no points on the line. There's no jerseys on the line. It's purely about conservation, making sure you're in the right position, and also sending a message ahead of stage three where there's going to be an all-out shootout, and we'll find out who has had to dig a little bit deeper than the others as they head under the arch. Zafiris there in about fifth position and about a four second gap back from our lead group of three to Taylor Brown. A little similar to what it was last time. Transition's important. Lucy Charles doesn't want to be stuck on her own again. Very good one from Flora Duffy and also from Learmonth. Can Lucy Charles, who isn't the best transitioner, because obviously she doesn't need to do it so fast normally. Normally she's had a 45 minute swim and she's got as long as she wants to transition. It is tough. It is tough for her, isn't it? I mean, this is the first time we saw her in a short course racer in the World Triathlon Series in Leeds, where she went really well. But this is a whole different ball game now, as we can see that Jess has decided to, to push the pace a little bit. She's got Duffy on her wheel as she's fighting to get her feet and her Velcro sun up. But Lucy Charles Barkley is out the back door already. Yeah, I think it's quite tricky for her. I mean, she, she definitely is put in the, you know, in the hot seat here a little bit with the transitions. But I think it's Learmouth on the front, just, you know, these two working together are some of the best bike handlers in, in, in short course racing and uh, this motorbike here is definitely really really close to them but I think they they looks like the group behind here is probably going to come together probably Georgia Taylor and uh, Lucy Charles again um, and we can't uh, underestimate what Lucy Charles has done here because she's really putting herself on the line which I think is brilliant to see and she's only just a week off that amazing world championship victory in the 70.3 uh, Ironman racing so she's going on top of the fact that is totally new to her she's going to be a little bit fatigued as well yeah I think that's kind of goes to show this Katie Katie Zafir is on the front pushing the group as well. A little bit of a split here between the girls coming out the water and then the, compared to the first round, Will. Yeah, there is as uh, it starts to heat up. Of course, it's warm conditions here as well. And at the front, these two, and that uh, had a little bit of help from the motorbike. There's no question on such a tight technical course. And uh, Rich has alluded to it, but it's true. Uh, and it's a talking point. Georgia Taylor Brown has had to leave Lucy Charles behind. So both of these two haven't got the ability to work together. Um, or to, or to get any help from each other, which could be telling at the back end, where Flora Duffy is now sitting in behind Jess Learmont and being a little bit more smart, a bit more tactical. Georgia Taylor Brown, we saw her looking behind her in the last race. She doesn't want to have to do this. Katie Zafiris leading the pack up. But at the same time, it'd be probably smarter at this point for Georgia to drop back to the pack and for Lucy to drop back to the pack. 
because they don't need to be uh, on their own as long as they make sure if that pack all comes together that they aren't last. Yeah, there are a couple of high profile, sorry, just before we go back, there's some names at the back like Spivey, Holland, Bogran and Potter who are all towards the back of this pack. They're going to be saved, I think, by Emily Morier and Valerie Bartellamy are five seconds back. But there might be an elimination from this big pack at the back end, which means that they can't conserve the way they want to. But as you can see the gap between Learmonth and Duffy back to Georgia Taylor-Brown, who's having a lonely old one at the moment. Well, we've got a really clear view here of the athletes coming out of uh, out of the water, down the long beach and into transition. And I have to say, Spivey and um, Vicky Holland actually look really tired. They were right at the back of the pack. Not two athletes that we'd really expect to see there. Yeah, it's like Beth Potter here. Also, she's definitely in a, in a dangerous position with, uh, with the two girls behind her, Emily Murray and um, Bethlehem. They're definitely on the cusp of getting eliminated. And I think this racing, it's interesting to see that the girls would go off the front so much. You would think it would be you know, a lot more complacent, a lot more together, but uh, it looks like that's not the way that, uh, you know, uh, Flora and them like to actually race. And I think if we, well. if we look at Potter's racing, um, she she loves flat water. When we saw her in the Arena Games, pool, she swam brilliantly. Munich, where she finished third, brilliant, lovely, calm waters. But she's not going to have enjoyed the surf here. We saw the head down there from Emily Morio. She knows she's at the back, and we're going to try and follow that as much as we can as the front uh, continue to just dominate those two, Jess Limont and Flora Duffy. We'll get back to the back as much as we can. It's Emily Morier, Valerie Bartellamy, both tracing down Simone Ackerman to avoid being eliminated once we get onto the mount line at the end of this bike. There is the pack just doing what they do, cycling around, knowing that there's athletes behind them that'll be eliminated before them. On the black carpet are our leaders. Then will come Georgia Taylor-Brown, who's just let the other two get away. Whereas Duffy and Learmonth have got a little bit of that ego. They want to cross the line first in stage two. They want to send a message. But the real race is here at the back. And Morier is on to the back of that pack. So she's made up the five minutes. Also on to the back. We'll just see who that last place athlete is when we come across and we get an update on our timing because we now have one lap to go. There might have been, I think, Simone Ackerman, perhaps. Yeah, we had uh, Valerie Bartholomew and uh, Simone Ackerman from uh, South Africa. They were a little bit further down the field. What an incredible lineup, though, Will, here, hey? What an incredible lineup. Olympic champions galore. We've got the top three from Tokyo. We've got the 70.3 world champion. We've got the world champion, Flora Duffy. We've got previous series winners, Katie Safir is here racing. And I think it just goes to show how, how much Super League has grown and how much the athletes want to come and be involved. Yeah, there's not a lot of names, Annie, that you'd want to be here that aren't here that haven't necessarily had an injury or something like that. I'm not sure why these two are fighting each other at the front. Oh, I love it. It's a clash of egos. If it's egos in the women, imagine what it's going to be like in the men's. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, there's nothing like a bit of silly racing to finish this up before they all look forward to a bit of time off. It's been a really big month. And Jess Limon, she wants four from four. She doesn't want someone to come in and steal the last win after she's taken three from three. And because of our point scoring system, she's only three points ahead because Georgia Taylor Brown's taken those three second places. But Simone Ackerman is at the back unless she has an absolutely lightning last lap of the bike and transition. She will be eliminated. But into very technical bike course, into that last sort of dead turn. Goes our leaders, then Georgia Taylor Brown going for a nice go. Saturday sunny ride. Nice and in third. I'm really loving watching Flora Duffy, the Olympic and world champion, go about her business. She has done just about everything there is to do in triathlon. Learmonth comes out first though onto the run. Duffy knows exactly what she needs to do. But Jess Learmonth, and I feel like she does her best racing when she just puts herself in the zone. We saw it before. We saw it at Super League Arena Games. She was so far ahead, and she just hammers herself because that's the way she races. And if she went away from that, maybe that wouldn't serve her that well. Also, she wants to show Georgia Taylor-Brown behind her that she is on all sorts of form. And look at who's in 16th position right now. Lucy Charles Barclay. She's going to be saved by Simone Ackerman, I think. 
This but is down to the back. Transition. Lucy Charles. Yep. Oh, she's out. <laughs> she's out. Is that smart racing from Lucy Charles, or is she starting to struggle a little bit after winning the 70.3 World Champs? Does she just go, okay, I want to be on the bubble. I want to do the least amount, but know that Simone's going to save me and get eliminated. Uh, it is a completely different energy system coming here to race Super League, Will. It really is. I mean, you're talking about a four-hour race versus, versus these little short sprints. I mean, it, it, it couldn't be more different. No, you couldn't. You, you can you can see uh, Flora Duffy and Jessely and Matthew busy having a casual Saturday chat on the on the Malibu Strip. Um, but yeah, I think it's uh, it is quite interesting. I mean, the, the different you know the energy systems of long course 70.3 racing and they're going to the short stuff. It definitely does. It's a different type of uh, beast really well it's going to be from these two at the front they're going to get the most rest they're just having a nice little chat i wonder what they're talking about see you in 15 minutes uh, that's when we're going to start duking it out properly georgia taylor brown behind them all three very much just needing to tread that fine line between just warming down knowing they've got a four minute break before they go all out in stage three whereas at the back well, Lucy Charles was right there. She struggled on the bike in stage one. She struggled on the bike in stage two, but she had one of the fastest runs in stage one. So maybe she can run herself out of trouble. Non Stanford had the quickest run out of anybody. George Taylor Brown, Beth Potter, Potter, Vicky Holland. So it was all Brits who had the top five run splits in stage one. But as you can see there, they're not trying too hard. They're just making sure they get ready for stage three and confirmation that our run champion is in fact Georgia Taylor Brown. She has taken the most run points across the course of our series, so she picks up 20 grand. The rich get richer and the rest of us scrape around for the cash afterwards. But at the back, let's go back to the back as soon as we possibly can because as they come across the line on the first run, we're going to see another elimination. And people on the bubble includes uh, Lucy Charles Barclay, Valerie Bartemelli, Emily Morier, Beth Potter, who's the fastest runner in triathlon. You think she'd run it back up? And there is that group. So as they come across this mount, uh, this line, someone is going to be eliminated, and I think we could see someone dropped off the back here. Yeah, I everyone's think run up to the group. I think it's Bartholomew. I think that's uh, just just on yeah, the bubble right. here from Belgium. Exactly. It's going to be very tricky so, to come back from this position. I think, you, you know, I think as soon as you know you're kind of slightly off and your, your legs are done. I mean, they've been racing. This is the fourth weekend in a row, so people are tired. They are. Well, blessed relief for Valerie Bartellamy. She'll be disappointed, but at the same time, she can be happy with a very strong month of racing. We lose another one back at the front. It's a nice training run for these three who've done the work early. So there is a list of the women who have been eliminated. Bartelemy Takahashi, uh, Alaria Zane, uh, and the two South Africans, Sanders and Ackerman, who have found the pace quite hot across the course of this month of racing. And why not when you've got the quality of the 2020 world champion, Georgia Taylor Brown at the front, Jess Learmont, who has done so much silvers in the Commonwealth Games. She won gold in the Olympic team relay. And of course, the individual gold medal getter is Flora Duffy. So one, two in the Olympics, uh, sitting right there, Duffy and Taylor Brown. And will we can't we can't forget about these short shoots because you know they're still in the pocket. They're waiting to be used on the next round, and uh, two of the wild cords have the ones who have got it. So they're going to be in the driver's seat, and I think Flora is definitely smiling currently. I, w I was just wondering, actually, you know, what, what's going through Jessica's mind? I mean, these are just such short little races. Is there anything she can do to break the Olympic champion in the last round? I think that's going to be very, very hard. I think almost Jess and Georgia are kind of thinking, OK, there's someone else in the round here we're racing against, but this one's between you and I. Why do I have the feeling that this will be our podium? It just depends on what kind of podium it looks like. Georgia Taylor-Brown needs to put Flora Duffy between herself and Jess Learmont to win the championship. Jess just needs to stick with Georgia, finish one place behind her or in front of her, and she will win the championship. Flora Duffy is not going to win the championship, but she's going to steal 20 grand and the race win. She's going to do her best to do that. And then behind them are a whole bunch of women who have no doubt been conserving somewhat, staying in the middle of the pack, racing the smart race. 
and could Will figure as we get to the pointy end of things? I'll tell you what, Will, we've just seen uh, Lisa Charles Barkley go across our screen. And wow, she looks good. You know, we've kind of knocked her because she's not quite as strong as she could be in terms of her skills. But she's running with the best of them and absolutely looking fantastic at the moment. Yeah, it's very interesting. She would have moved up even though the elimination's only from behind. But I think, you know, she wants to be in the point and she's a racer. And if you're a racer, you want to go for it. So there's your top 12, 12 seconds covering them. Sophie Colwell has been mid-packed throughout. We've seen her figure at other times during Super League racing. Emily Morier is back there. Victoria Lopez, who did what she came to do, I think, in a lot of ways and will make this race. They are your top 15. And now it's time for where it all gets decided. Lopez has been eliminated, confirmation of that. Flora Duffy looks very strong at the front. And some tactics from Jess Learmonth and Georgia Taylor Brown. I think what's coming up next is something very exciting because you absolutely have to say your best to last here, that's for sure. Come on in then. We've got a couple of people who've been eliminated in the race so far, Ilaria and Victoria. How are you doing? You've just come fresh out of this, Victoria. Have you got your breath back? Yeah, I mean, still, I need some oxygen, but it was really fun, especially for the Olympic gold medal of the race. Also, Lucy was really fun. Yeah. A word from your team captain here? Yeah, I just think it's great. Um, this, this type of racing is so hard. So, yeah, I think you've done an amazing job. And, um, yeah, I'm super proud of how the Eagles are racing. Uh, it's awesome. How are you feeling after being eliminated as well, Elaria? Well, I'm pretty sad. Yeah, you're smiling <laughs> already. Thank you. Yeah, I was wishing to make it a little bit further than what I did. But, well, uh, that's racing with the best in the world, so... I tried my best. And we've so enjoyed watching all of these girls racing here today. The pace is pushing the heat. How are you finding the heat out here? I guess it's similar to how you train. Yeah, that's actually my temperature. I like to be above 25 degrees, so that's... I feel better in this weather instead of Jersey or Munich, so I love this weather, yeah. And finally, the kind of Americans amongst us have got a bit of an advantage here today, and they're making the most of it, it looks like, up the top. Yeah, America, they love sport. It's also like all the time, go, 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 and it's really fun, you know. The atmosphere has been great today. Guys, bad luck, but congratulations as well, especially uh, with some of the, the bonuses. Thank you, guys. I'll take that off you. Let you get a drink. These, these people need to have a rest and a drink, don't they, Tim? How are they feeling, do you think? Are they obviously putting a brave you know, face on it. I think they'll be content with their performance. As they both said, they're the best in the world here. I think the next race, you're going to see fireworks. The top contenders were holding back in those first two races. It's going to be an amazing race. We've only got a couple of, a few, few seconds left to go before we get to the start of that last, the third race of the girls. But the question is, Tim, what's an ego race? That's what they're doing, Jess, I hear. Yeah, I think um, they're just playing everything slow and steady. And I think um, there's good, people are saving their matches and are going to burn them all on that last run. The swim's still going to be very important. Cannot wait to see. All right, let's get you back to that racing. <laughs> there is no rest for the wicked and we are straight back into the racing once again. And a beautiful day here in Malibu. We're going to get ready for stage three. So, a short shoot in the pocket for Lucy Charles Barclay. A short shoot in the pocket for Flora Duffy. Neither of them will figure in the overall championship standings. It's all about Jess Learmonth and Georgia Taylor Brown. And we have now 14 women ready to go here in stage three with it all to play for. All right, here we go. Hands go in the air and they are off. A few gaps here, very fast out. Went one of the Eagles oh. and over that oh, and a big dive into the water. The wow. Oh my goodness. You saw that word. It's all about timing with these waves, isn't it? It's all about timing. Well, that could have rattled a couple of people if they just hadn't got the timing quite right. And we should see the swim split up a little bit more than normal. Across the top of your screen comes Jess Learmonth. Now it's all about her and Georgia Taylor-Brown. She's got Lucy Charles swimming right next to her. That's helpful. But 
Out the front is Duffy, who took the left-hand side, the Cheetahs. Good work, Annie Emerson, Cheetah team captain or team manager. Took the left-hand side, or at least screen left. And it looks like the fastest way to the first boy, just the way the, the wave shook out just then. And Duffy has an immediate advantage. And behind her is Katie Zafiris. Well, well, that was a really tough start for, for Jess Learmont, and I'll take no credit for the position on the pontoon. That was Johnny Brown. We can just see now the athletes heading back into the water. It gets very messy here. It looks like oh. almost they caught their feet on the on, on the edge of the wave and got kind of like almost in a somersault on the left-hand side. Oh, wow. That's a, oh. that's a don't do this at home. Kids, if you're watching, don't ever do that. Don't do it in the pool. Don't do it anywhere. The great That's news. how Super they, League works. I'm sorry about that. That's the way it works. They were straight back up again. We need to say that it looks like everyone yeah. is in one piece. It's Flora Duffy. He's gone flying out, though. And, and Jess Learmont now has lost a little bit of ground, but she'll be angry. She'll be angry. She'll be fighting to get back on, and she's capable of doing that. There's also a rhino here in second place as well. I'm not sure exactly who this is, but they're not, not, not always up in the pointy end, which is great to see. We should point out, first of all, we are glad that everyone's okay after that. We do try and avoid those things. We have to start on time and then we can't control the waves. But Lucy Charles, you know, she was at the back as she struggles on the bike, but her runs, her best pace has been a 3.08. Her second stage run was a 3.09. So she has two of the top three runs of the day. And we know she gets better with time. No one else is within 10 seconds in terms of the che of the race contenders. So she could well, and she has a short shoot, so she could well run her way back up to this. Let's see how she is feeling after, of course, racing 70.3 last weekend. That was in Utah, though, so she doesn't have a long way to travel and all of that. Uh, same for Flora Duffy. She's on the same time zone. So that could be a really exciting race at the front between the 70.3 world champ and the Olympic and world champion. Meanwhile, we have the race within a race between Jess Learmonth and Georgia Taylor-Brown and the other one between Katie Zafiris, Beth Potter and Vicky Hollis, all of whom finished within four seconds of each other and are shooting it out for the third spot on the podium. So there's plenty to watch in this one and there'll be no conservation whatsoever as they come out of the water. No, I absolutely love to watch Katie Safiri's race. We haven't mentioned her very much because she's been in that sort of mid-pack place. She is a bronze medalist from Tokyo, had two fourth-place finishes uh, in the series so far. Um, I wouldn't bet against her if she's up there with Flora. She can certainly get on her wheel. She's ridden with her many, many times in, a, in different races and different series. Um, and she has won, of course, in the Super League series. And it's Flora Duffy, I think, that's gone backwards here. And they're catching the waves coming in. This seemed quite interesting. I think it was Lucy Charles Barkley who really managed to catch the wave there nicely. Uh, it's Katie Zafiris also in here as well who came through. So she looks like she's moved up quite a lot. Yeah, Charles Barkley in the front. Zafiris, Learmont, Duffy's having to push now. I think that's Sophie Colwell there behind, is it? No, it's Flora Duffy no, coming it's through it's now in third position. She's got Jess Learmont in second. Uh, wow, what a Georgia swim. Taylor Brown in the Scorpions. We've got one of each team coming through as well here, but it looks like it's Lucy Charles Barkley coming through here. Very similar to the first round, and this is going to be a cracker. So Lucy Charles Barkley had two of the top three fastest run times, but she has the two slowest bike times recorded. And out first comes Duffy. Extremely important for Charles Barkley to stay with this pack. And now, well, there's no two and one getting out. It is stay with the pack and hang on. Zephyrus is there, Learmonth is there, Duffy is there, and Taylor Brown is there. And off the back is Charles Barclay, who's had another tardy transition, and that could cost her in the end as Duffy pushes at the front. Yeah, it looks like uh, Lucy Charles had a problem. She stopped there as well. She put her foot onto the pedal and threw her leg around instead of the other girls running and flying mounted onto the bike. So there's a bit of experience thing here. There's a little bit, but Flora Duffy coming to the front, she knows this is where the cream of the, cr the, cream of the pie is going to be lying. I think we can just safely say that that wave changed everything. Yeah, it definitely brought the, more of the girls together. And I think we have uh, one of the French athletes, athletes here as well. It might be Cassandra Bagran, uh, who's, who's busy trying to stuck in no man's land here. Taylor Spivey, who grew up just down the road, actually, is a lifeguard, uh, is leading that chase pack. She's got plenty of supporters here today. And it's all about this race in four, though. Duffy is the only one with the short shoot. Learmont and Taylor Brown, where you can throw a blanket over them, and fair enough. And Katie Zafiris, who was the 2019 Super League champion, is in the box seat for third place on the podium. 
in the overall. And, no well, of course, with this race forward. as well. It's and it's a group of four. Down. You Who has the run legs off the no back of this? All four win. of them are immense win. runners. Gee, that's a tight you corner when you look at it from run. above. Sure Extremely technical this. course. Lucy Friday Charles is way off the back. And this is where it is all decided and how good after a month of racing. Yeah, this is going to be amazing to watch. Great to see Georgia Taylor and then Katie Zafiris, as you said, with her hometown. She has a family and everybody. I just saw her mother and father here and her sister here. She bakes some amazing cookies, so keeping the athletes fueled. And, yeah, I think it's going to be great to see Georgia Taylor in the in the action part of this one. And, and, and four girls instead of two is amazing to watch. And the athletes, well, they're so close, aren't they, in terms of the points, Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmont. And there are points and a half here. So you've got to say that Georgia at this point, she's in the mix. She hasn't been previously. And she's the better runner out of Jess and, and, and Georgia, the, both of them. She's a, she's a better runner by far, I would say. Yeah, she just, need, just needs to limit, limit her mistakes there. In the last couple of rounds, she had a few little silly mistakes, but hopefully she can keep it together and we can see, we can see a, a Flora Georgia running, running, running battle coming on with Katie in the mix, I think. It's the running battle we should have seen in the Olympics, is the Flora Georgia running battle. Uh, of course, a, a flat tyre, Georgia Taylor-Brown ran back to a silver medal. And, uh, look, Georgia Taylor-Brown has the run to put the time into Jess Learmonth on the final stage. Has she, though, because she was by herself for a lot more of the bikes, just used up a little bit more energy, uh, whereas Jess and Flora were managing to be together as off the front? Well, you don't sit on the front if you, uh, if you don't feel like you've got the legs for the run. There's no need to. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a brave one. I think Georgia wants to sit in smart here. Um, you know, she's got the legs. I think the other girls are kind of looking around. Flora's Flora's not one to to not take a pull. She, she she's she's always in the breakaway. So you like to see her do a lot of work here on this section of the bike. Yeah, she doesn't like to sit back. That's for sure. Some athletes prefer a tougher bike, don't they? They feel like they run better off it. But this is uh, playing out to be an incredible run. I think, as you said there as well, Will. What's really interesting is to see Flora and Georgia Taylor Brown go head to head on the run because Flora Duffy in the Olympics was the best run I've really seen from her in, in her entire career. Yeah, it's amazing that everyone gets to see, see the showdown of uh, Flora and Jess, that, uh, I mean, of Georgia, that everyone's wanted to see at the Olympic Games. And uh, they're coming through this tight section here of the course, a double, double left-hander. They come through the transition, screaming great with the fans and the flags in the background here. And uh, they come through a sharp U-turn here, uh, just for transition. Could this have worked out any better? Three world champions at the front, two Olympic gold medalists, an Olympic silver medalist, an Olympic bronze medalist, and both of our championship leaders, and they're all within 1.1 seconds after a month. This is exactly how you want things to play out. They've got one lap on the bike and a 1.6 kilometre run, and then everything will be decided. And you always have to say, was that way the thing that, you know, made this little group happen? Or was it just smart racing? Because how do we have the three medalists or four medalists, because they're all medalists here in this group from Tokyo, out in front now for this final round? I think they kind of saved some energy. So Katie was kind of quiet the first few rounds. And also kind of the start there with the girls getting thrown like topsy-turvy in the start. Things kind of got a bit jumbled up, but they've come together here. And this is really what everybody wants to be watching. Zafiris sitting on the back. Her and Georgia Taylor Brown are the ones with just tons of Super League experience. Zafiris, I think, has raced just about every Super League race, and she's done so. Well, she's the most dominant Super League female athlete. There's no doubt about that. She's sitting at the back. Flora Duffy at the front. And one lap left, well, half a lap left on the bike. And then it's a straight running race, so transition will be crucial. Any second loss is going to be really hurting these athletes at the back end. And Statistically, I think Jess Learmonth is the weakest runner of this group. Georgia Taylor-Brown just has to put one person between her and Jess to win the championship and steal it after three wins in a row from Jess. But we say she's the weakest runner, but gee, she's had some immense runs over the past three weeks. Yeah, she definitely has. I think Jess, you know, she's been improving year on year with the running as well. And she goes to show that she's, you know, even on the run, she's one she can take it out from the other girls too. Question now, when does Flora Duffy take the short shoot? She has two options. She can take it at either point on the two laps of the run. If I was her, I'd be sitting in and just letting everybody remember that she has the shortcut to take. 
and then take it with 400 metres to go and sprint away to the finishing line. Anyway, out of the shoes they go. Duffy onto the back carpet, Taylor Brown, Learmonth, and just behind, a little beat behind is Zephyrus. But a good transition will fix all that. Racking the bike, the world champion. Shoes on, not the fastest. And all three of them will go past the note. Two of them will. And Zephyrus makes time up in transition. Taylor Brown does too. They're the two with the Super League experience. And we know Super League, well, the fourth discipline is incredibly important. And that is why Super League athletes go on to win Olympic and World Championships. 1.6 kilometres to go. A huge gap back to the chasing pack. And Holland and Potter will be fighting it out for probably fourth position in the overall championships because they're on the same number of points. And they are 1.2 seconds apart. Uh, we're but just two watching. with the Super League experience go to the front, Annie. We're just watching Lucy Charles Barkley come in and she looks like she could be one of the athletes that could be eliminated. She was just behind Sophie Coldwell, but she was the last of the pack to come in. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that, that's a very tricky. She has been eliminated, oh. Lucy Charles Barkley. You would have Charles. never have called that. Another short shoot gone. And man, off the 70.3 wow. World Champs win, that is that is devastating. Wow. We really did, I didn't expect that. She was so up there in the last two <laughs> rounds. Think... She had to battle, but she had a tough time there on the bike. We saw her going out on the last bike, and perhaps it just got a little bit too much for her. We can see now Georgia Taylor-Brown, though, has decided to stamp her authority on this race, and she has the Olympic pick champion on her shoulder but of course she has the short shoot and I think when it comes down to it it's going to be pretty tough for Georgia Taylor Brown to get the better of Duffy with that short shoot. Sophia is on her shoulder and sadly we see that Jess Learmont has dropped off the pace now. That's the real that's the real race. Georgia Taylor Brown is in the perfect position so if they cross the line the way it is now Georgia Taylor Brown would steal the Super League Championship from Jess Learmont. Of course Duffy has the short shoot but Zephyrus, her positioning could play a major role in this as well. Georgia Taylor-Brown needs to win this or at least arrive at the short shoot in the lead, knowing that she might concede it to Duffy. And Jess Learmoth is watching them go down the road. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, it's, uh, we really want to see, I mean, does everyone want to see Flora Duffy and Georgia Taylor-Brown have a sprint finish? Put your hand up. Oh, everybody yeah. I think everyone wants that. You're going to have to, hopefully Georgia's going to have to put the hammer down now and give it to, to Flora Duffy. Who's got the better sprint legs, do you think, um, Will? Well, I mean, it's, it's so hard. How hard is it to say after the very different lead-ins that these two athletes have had? Flora Duffy has had more time off. Je Georgia Taylor-Brown has flown from Europe to the US. She's raced three weeks in a row. She's had a very packed schedule, but she's got every reason to take that, uh, not take revenge, but from the Olympics, <laughs> but she missed out on the chance to, to race Flora Duffy as a foot race. She's saying, hey, take, the, take it now. Take it this time. Oh, there she goes. All right. And she does. And Georgia Taylor's got to get up on their feet. She has to close this gap to Flora Duffy. She has to. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Well, she's taken it lap one, so she has an extra 800 metres to close that gap now. Whereas if they'd have stayed together, she almost said, hey, Flora, take it this time. Hey, hey, Super League rookie, take it this time. Don't sit in with me and then leave me 400 metres. Leave me 1.2 k's to do it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The foot race now is on. No one has a short shoot left in the pocket. Georgia Taylor-Brown still has Katie Zafiris uh, behind her, which means she still will take the championship. So can Katie Zafiris hand it to Jess Learmonth? Wow. Oh, it's like a chess match. Oh, wow. <laughs> from the front and from, 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 from the athletes just behind as well. It's going to be very interesting to see. We'll see if Georgia Taylor, I think she I think she really earned. After some tough weeks, you really hope she does, you know. Yes, but how do we have the winner of three races, London, Munich, Jersey, sitting in fourth, and she's not going to take the overall title because of the points here. I mean, bitter disappointment for Jess Learmont. We don't know that. Don't be saying that. We don't know that. All we need is Katie Zafiris to overtake Georgia Taylor Brown and go to Jess Learmont. Oh. We've got time here. I mean, it's not done until the finishing line. It's not done. It's not over. <laughs> Uh, Katie Zafiris is gone, sorry Will, but I, I, I think that's Georgia Taylor Brown series now wrapped up. I think it is. Laura Duffy, Georgia Taylor Brown, Katie Zafiris are your top three. Jess Lee Month has fallen back, but Duffy looks supreme. What an amazing performance from Florida Duffy coming in here. I mean, she, she is so powerful coming through here to the finishing line.
Here she comes. Flora Duffy will be your champion. She led from start to finish, dominated throughout the Olympic champion, the world champion, and the Malibu champion. Georgia Taylor Brown is your overall championship oh, winner. My because Katie Zafiris comes in in third position. Malibu so your podium then is Georgia Taylor Brown from Jess Learmont and from Katie Zafiris. The series leader for three weeks and six days, and then she's had the run pulled out from under him. And Jess Learmont, what a month of racing. Wow, what a time to be Georgia Taylor Brown. She's had crashes, she's had mechanicals, she made a mistake with a short shoot, and now she is your champion. Cassandra Bogran comes in ahead of a country woman, Leonie Berry over fifth and sixth, ahead of Non Stanford. There is Taylor Spidey on home soil. What a race to finish. Tactical, brutal, everything we love. Rachel Clammer, 50 seconds back. Gee, it split up when the pace really came on. Beth Potter takes fourth place overall from Vicky Holland, and she does it by five seconds. There is your championship winner and your overall winner of this race, Flora Duffy. Congratulations to both of them. What a discussion that would be. We got like 10 seconds plus. Yeah. Yeah. It made a massive difference. Well done, Georgia. Thank you. Let's cheer on Sophie Coleman. Come on, let's give her a round of applause. Well done, Sophie. Good work. Well done. Oh, she didn't get eliminated. She got to give it up. She did so, so well. Congratulations. Well done. Got a little bit of time. Well done. 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 So what a month it has been for Georgia Taylor Brown, the Scorpion. She wins it overall and she does it by a single solitary point from Jessica Learmont. Katie Zafir is third, Beth Potter fourth, Vicky Holland fifth, and this is the overall Taylor Spivey. Leone Perio pushes up, Cassandra Bogrant pushes up as well. A single point in it after four weeks of racing between the two Brits who both picked up mixed team relay Olympic gold and they had a one two in the championship. So much camaraderie between all of these women and a lot of relief too there for Taylor Brown. And fair enough, she had to make a. She had to make a. Uh, complaint, I guess, or go to the committee at the end of the jersey race, but gee, it all turns out well. Lucy Charles Barclay let out the swim. She was tardy in transition. Her bike was her Achilles heel at the end of the day and she could have got away there. Wasn't able to do so. Instead, it was Learmont and Duffy and that was really the story of this race as the motorbike were getting a little bit too close there for comfort, but it is a very technical course. Waves in and waves out. That's what we knew would happen as the pack were forced to chase all day. And when it came down to the run, it was four women, an American, a Bermudan, and two Brits. The short shoot was taken early, but Flora Duffy, as she did, well, she ran it home, just like she did in the Olympics. And just like she did in the Olympics, Taylor Brown came in oh second my. and stole that championship lead. And what a month it has been. We're gonna go down to Kate on the ground with our winner. I can see Sean though, um, who I was with earlier. Okay. Okay. So I need Georgia Taylor right now. Stuff is just easy, is it? Hang on. Yes, I have got the champion of Malibu with me here right now, Flora Duffy. It's easy, this Super League triathlon stuff. <laughs> well, I think it looks easier, easier said than done. But um, I felt really good out there today. It's my first ever Super League. Um, so I have very limited experience racing over this distance. Didn't really know what to expect, but absolutely loved it. There was a big debate about whether you coming in so fresh would help you out today. How do you feel about that? 
Yes, I think it definitely helped coming in fresh. I was excited to race, whereas I think if this was your fourth race in four weeks, you're really feeling it. Um, but I will say the speed was a shock to my system, and I think everybody else has had that sort of tuned into them for the last few weeks. Um, so, yeah, some advantages, some disadvantages. We saw those waves take away the feet of Jess as well, who'd done so well in all the races previously. How did you handle that? I really like the surf. I mean, I grew up in Bermuda, so I spent a lot of time in the ocean um, body surfing. So I felt very comfortable out there. Unfortunately, on the last swim, I was leading, and the girls just behind me, they got the wave, and I didn't, so they catapulted over me. Um, but that's just uh, just as luck of the draw when you're swimming out there in the waves. <laughs> I like the way you're just using the elements in your favor here. Maybe a quick word as well for Georgia Taylor-Brown, who won, wins the championship, but uh, you did so well again. I mean, I mean, it was the race we all just wanted to see, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, Georgia, she is such a classy athlete, so talented. Um, she's She's still so young and she's world champion, silver medalist, now Super League champion. Um, yeah, she's awesome. She really turned it on on that last run. And, you know, I have mixed feelings about the short shoot, uh -huh. but I was very glad in that moment that I had the short shoot and I could just sneakily take it and uh, gain a few seconds on it. You look very comfortable with that. Actually, I wondered if you take it because you took it early, right? I took it on. The, no, I took it on the last lap of the run. Oh, OK, so you were thinking about it and you figured this is where we need. This. Yes, I knew if I established a gap then, it's so short to the finish that it would be much harder for them to catch me. So strategically, it made the most sense. And it meant that you could come over the line with a smile. All right. Congratulations, Flora. Thank you so much for talking to us. You are the Malibu Super League Triathlon champion. And now we're getting another one in here. I'm going to swap you out. Georgia, get on in. <laughs> Hug it out, Georgia. Congratulations. Thank you you are the champion of Super League. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it is uh, a little. Um, it's, it's a bit bittersweet, I guess. Jess has led the whole series. She's been so strong, so dominant. And it's hard because we're such good friends and it's hard like to to be able to race against her and I don't know it's just hard but I'm happy but uh, yeah I wish we could I wish we could share it spoken like a true champion and also one with a lot of empathy which is something you don't necessarily always hear when someone's just crossed that line and, and has won how important do you think it was last week when, when you had all the chaos around uh, whether you got the short shoot whether you didn't the way that you pressed on and won that race it was so imp or, or kept going it was so impressive yeah I think uh, God just keeps testing me to be honest and, and challenging me but uh, no I think bad things come in threes I had three things go wrong in Jersey last weekend so I feel like a little bit of luck was hopefully on my side today um, and I definitely think it was because we did very well to catch that wave in on the last race and that made well that made the race to be honest so um, yeah no I, I made a lot of mistakes last weekend I've, I've sorted my head out and I'm back in the game and yeah I'm happy to be able to finish today on a high when you say about those mistakes then so do you feel as though you built up to this performance today it was it was kind of a practice run to come in here uh, not quite no um, it was yeah, I think there was a lot. I think my head just wasn't in it last week, and I made so many silly mistakes. I just knew I had to nail everything today. And it's in Super League; it's all the small things. It's all about transition. If you get a good transition, you, that can make the race for you. Yeah, absolutely. You've done you've done so well. It's kind of unbelievable. I know what you mean about Jess Limmer having led all this time, but. You you want to savor this? This is a brilliant achievement. Yeah, yeah no, it is. And I, I mean, I can still share it with Jess, but yeah, I don't know. I wish we could do it together. <laughs> You're a great champion. Congratulations. We're now going to head down to see Annie, who I believe has someone, a very special person, who was eliminated late doors. Annie. Yeah, I'm here in the Boa Recovery Tent with Lucy Charles Barkley. Lucy, what a week it has been. Talk us through this race, first of all. Yeah, I mean, this race was brutal from the start. The sea was so rough, and obviously that is actually my strongest discipline, but I even felt like that was the brutal bit right to start with. Um, then the bike, I never really know what to expect. It's obviously more technical than I ride, and I really just felt like I just didn't have the watts to go with the girls today. My legs were suffering, but then my run legs actually surprised me, and I felt pretty strong there. So all of it is just fast, furious. There's no let up. You're just going all in from the gun and just in a world of pain. 
It's a big learning curve from where you've come from. Crowned world champion 70.3, I'm at last weekend. This is something totally different. Yeah, I mean, last weekend when I raced, I actually pretty much did the whole day on my own, whereas here you've got girls around you the whole time. So it's just a completely different dynamic. And the pace is obviously right at the top end, whereas I'm in a bit more of a control cruise zone in the 70.3 distance. So completely different elements. But um, if you want to learn, then I think this is what I need to do. Your run was spectacular. It was up with, there with some of the, the fastest times. Yeah, my run really surprised me, actually. I just kind of got into my rhythm and then was like, oh, I think I can maybe catch one more girl, one more girl. And I might be able to kind of catch up again, but yeah, it wasn't to be. More Super League racing for you? I definitely want to do some more short course, and I think Super League, if I can handle this, then like the normal uh, WTCS kind of racing should be a bit more easy. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely want to be back. What's the best way to, uh, to improve your bike handling skills and be able to go with the likes of Duffy and Learmont? I think the only way I'm going to get better is just more experience and riding with those girls, seeing what they're doing and learning on the go. But the more I can do, the better I'm going to get. And I'm hoping that over the winter I can do a bit more maybe crit racing and short stuff just to get used to that as well. And just finally, your thoughts on Georgia Taylor-Brown and Jess Learmont, two teammates technically from GB. What an incredible season they both had. Oh, yeah, they've both had an incredible year. It's been inspiring to watch for me as well as, like, an outsider wanting to come into the short course, just seeing what these girls are doing. And, I mean, all of us in Great Britain, there is so much strength and depth, and it is so inspiring. And I think we can only bounce off each other and get better. So, yeah, what a year they've had. Great stuff. Thanks very much indeed, Lucy. And it was brilliant racing today, even if you didn't quite make it to the finish. Thank, thank you very much. Incredible to see such a great champion there eliminated. It just shows how tough Super League triathlon racing really is, doesn't it, Tim? These, these women have done absolutely unbelievably to That last race was one of the fastest I've seen. I think, it, I think the swim start didn't go the best for some of them, but they get back on their game. Um, you could see on the bike the pressure was on. People were going backwards. It was really hard to move forward. And that run, oh, short shoot, it was awesome. Just so exciting, wasn't it? And I think now we have a moment to see the champion of Super League presented with the trophy. So it's over to Michael Dulce to present that. day it is turning into of course the men's race is coming up and it is going to be a straight shootout none of this have to put one person in front of another person etc it's all about Johnny Brownlee Hayden Wild and Alex Yee whoever finishes top out of them will likely be our champion and Vincent Lewis like the shark that he is is lurking a couple of points back after a tough time in Jersey as they set up for the Podium. George Taylor Brown is ready. She is alongside our CEO Michael Dulst and one of the co founders of the series, Leonid Bogoslavsky. Yes, gentlemen, this is now the moment to present the trophy, guys. <laughs> George Taylor Brown now weighed down by the incredible trophy. She is your Super League Triathlon Championship Series winner. What a moment. Okay, so let's get a couple of thoughts, okay. but you keep taking it. Let's take a moment to have a look at the Championship Series leaderboard, shall we? Uh, just here with Tim Don. After all that, that cruel moment with Jess Learmouth, and we heard Georgia talk about it. How hard must that have been for her to see, Jess? That would have been really tough. I mean, you can see how close it was. One point after four weeks of really intense racing. And the other great performance there is Katie having an amazing race on home soil um, to get uh, grab that third spot. That was a very tight race as well. Yeah, some brilliant, brilliant performances, as you said, and so great to see uh, someone who's raced so well. And actually, Georgia, she spoke about she's had a few 
few mistakes over the last few weeks of racing, so it really came together for her today, didn't it? It did, and she needed a bit of luck, but a great thing I love about Georgia is things were going wrong, things were happening to her, but she kept on fighting. She kept her head in the game, and she knew she had another bite of the cherry, another week of racing. And to see it come together to her, the three Olympic medalists getting one, two, three on the day, you couldn't have asked for a better finale at the Super League. Brilliant stuff. Well, Tim, there is still another race to come. I don't think I can take it. I can't take this. Your heart is going. I <laughs> My can voice see is that. going. It's, it's amazing. I, I love it here. It's awesome. Oh, it's so brilliant. So the guys are now lining up for the men's race, which will decide what is happening with these gentlemen. Johnny Brownlee on the top of the leaderboard. He has about a 50% chance, I learn, of winning today, depending on what goes on with various permutations, which we'll talk about subsequently. I'd give him more than 50%. Okay. He's, um, he's building momentum. He, he hasn't put a foot wrong. He just hasn't got to that top step. But to be as consistent as Johnny has, he's definitely going in here with a lot of confidence. If Hayden Wild or Alex Yee can beat him, though, and we've seen them do it. The long run up to the beach is really going to help Hayden and Alex. I mean, Hayden and Alex, because they're slightly off on the swim. And then Vince, he's swimming like a machine at the moment. If he has a good start, it's going to be all to pay for. Especially that short shoot on the first race, that could really set them up for a finale. Those short shoots, I've been, we've been backwards and forwards about whether we like them or not, but they've really come into play in this men's championship series. Absolutely, they've changed, changed how people are racing. People are racing so aggressively so early, they're, they're willing to go deep to get the short shoot and some of them haven't been able to use it at the end of the race. It's, it's really good racing. We are into the water. Dun, dun. Oh, dun, he is dun. hunting. Here comes the shark. The Falcon is going to fly in London. See you later. And running to the victory again is Vincent Lewis. The Frenchman does the job. Johnny Bradley and Alex G. The two Brits. Who's going to do it? It's going to be Alex G. Wow. What racing. Johnny Brownlee, I'm going to jog down with you. Race leader, so much to play for, but a big swim, very demanding awaits you. How are you going to take it? Uh, well, I think we've got a good start position on the far right, so uh, try and stop. Sorry, guys, sound went again. Difficult uh, with the dropouts there, so we apologise for that as the teams make their way onto that strip of black carpet here on the beach in Malibu. And you can see the Scorpions on the left-hand side. As we look at the Eliminator race format, it is three mass start triathlons with an elimination at the end of every bike discipline and of every lap of the run. The short shoots are in play. They are awarded for the fastest athlete in the first swim, crossing the mountain line afterwards and then the first bike crossing the mat line afterwards. And then of course you can take that in the last run as well. There are more points on offer, which makes it a very, very open race for Johnny Brownlee, Vincent Lewis, Hayden Wild, Alex Yee and Vasco Velasa for all the cookies here in Malibu. It is time to get underway in stage one. There is plenty to play for, and that includes the swim jersey, the bike jersey, and the run jersey, and the $20,000 attached to each for the swim jersey. It's a straight shootout between Vincent Lewis. You can see here second from right, and Matt Hauser as well, who is on the far right. So those two together, the first person between those two who crosses the mount line will pick up 20 grand. I'm sure they've had a discussion about it. Matt Hauser gave it to him. Uh, it's because he wanted to get the short shoot in Jersey. I doubt that is going to happen again as the full five teams take to the start, first of all. Time to get underway in the men's, the last race of the championship season. They are off and... Vincent Lewis slightly missed the start. Matt Hauser straight into the water. Here comes the wave. This time it hits those that are on the right-hand side, but we've seen that the right is better for the boy placement. 
You can already see the Cheetahs having a decent run to the first boy. And on the men's leaderboard, you can see how close it is. Brownlee, Wild and Yee. Johnny Brownlee hasn't won a race. And yet he sits on top of the leaderboard by virtue of his incredible consistency. Third, second and second. Hayden Wild dropped down after he finished fourth uh, in Munich. And Alex Yee, well, he won in a sprint with Johnny Brownlee in probably one of the best moments ever in Super League last weekend. And he's put himself up into third ahead of Vincent Lewis, who is the best swimmer. And you can see him on the right-hand side. Unfortunately... He's not going to get to the first boy first because of the way the swim has shaken out and it's better on the left. And instead, it's a three-way run into the first boy between the Cheetahs and the Sharks, who had better position as we welcome Annie Emerson and Richard Murray back into commentary. And it looks like a washing machine there in the middle, everyone on top of each other. Yeah, this looks an absolute carnage coming through the first boy here for the guys. It, it gets pretty gnarly. I mean, sometimes you're upside down, sometimes you're not breathing for, for a couple of seconds. And uh, yeah, definitely is very, very tough. But there's definitely some of spear heading the front of this, this pack here um, as they head through probably the first 100, 150 meters here. Yeah, all still quite close together, though, as we saw in the women's race. But there was is one athlete out in front. Difficult to pick out from here on our screens exactly who it is. We can see them almost being pushed along already by a little bit of swell there, Richard. Yeah, it looks like the swell kind of has pulls across a little bit from the one side to the next, uh, which will help these athletes kind of moving from the first boy to the second boy. And, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether there's some waves when they come on the outside, whether it changes the, the dynamic and whether there's a break or not. I reckon I'm right. So into the beach they come for the first time, of course, all the jerseys to be awarded, the short shoots to be awarded. So it's a real balancing act here between how hard do you go early on, how much do you conserve for the overall. We're going to see people who, like a Matt Hauser, like a Seth Ryder on the bike and, uh, and also Vasco Velasa, do the job they need to do in these single disciplines to try and pick up that cash and those jersey points and the short shoot if they can. Meanwhile, our overall championship contenders, well, do they let the short shoot go and conserve or do they race hard in the swim and bike early? Flora Duffy, of course, she can do both, uh, as most of our championship contenders can. So conserve where you need to, catch waves when you can, and that is going to spread the... Yeah, the athletes have been absolutely thrown onto the shore, but it's only three or four of them, and uh, the rest look like they've been pulled back out again. Yeah, Houser's away. He caught that way. The Australian used to swimming at the beach. He might end up picking up the 20,000. Ahead of him, who is that? That's Aaron Royal there. For Aaron Royal. I think they're gunning for it. They're definitely want to, they're going to go for all these points here that are coming through for the jerseys, for the swim jersey leader. So, unsurprisingly, it's two Aussies and a Kiwi at the front with Taylor Reid in third position. Plenty of coastline in those two countries, plenty of swimming uh, in the ocean. And it's Hauser who could well pick up the $20,000. He just needs to finish ahead of Vincent Lewis, and Lewis is nowhere. It doesn't matter. He takes the full points. He picks up the 20 grand. He's happy about it, too. He takes the short shoot from Aaron Royal. So, Hauser has the short shoot. Royal sits with him. The two Australians at the front. And everything, we knew it would mix it up, Annie Emerson, and it did exactly that. Well, uh, it threw out some real surprises there, didn't it? And Johnny Brownlee getting caught up, unfortunately. We saw Reed coming out, having a great swim. But it just goes to show what that wave's doing. If you're in the wrong place, and I think it is interesting, Will, that Aaron Royal, who we've seen a little bit steady on the swims this season when he's normally up there, knew exactly where to place himself when that wave came. Yeah, you can see the two boys giving each other the knuckles here just behind. You know, we did it. We caught the wave we're off the front yet it's gonna be interesting to see what they do now vincent louis behind them getting stomping hard on the pedals and uh, there's a couple of guys sitting sitting on his wheel as well but it's you've seen the, the wave what the wave has done yet split the guys up so much which uh, is you know is definitely something tricky something you can't plan for um, hayden wild also coming through and, and alex yi uh, sending riding in front of this group of johnny brownlee well, that's good to see Alex Yee pulling Johnny Brownlee along. We had Jonas Schomburg as well up there. Yeah, I think uh, Jonas Schomburg is also very, very good. He also comes from the coast. Uh, he spends a lot of time in South Africa and East London, so he's used to the waves. And uh, the guy's getting very low in the aero bars. Uh, it's Alex Yee as well and Johnny Brownlee have got a lot of work to do. Christian Blumenfeld as well. He's one of the wild cards that's come in from last weekend, 70.3 in St. George, world champs. And the guys are really, really on the limit here, absolutely on the limit. And uh, they're definitely working 
Johnny Brownlee coming to the front here uh, and doing his, his turn of work with, uh, with the two Brits in the front. Yannick Schaufler, Thomas Toth, Max Studer, who was who was so good uh, on the bike back uh, in Munich, is at the back of this course as well. It's a very tight, very technical course, tighter than I even anticipated uh, when we arrived. He obviously received all the maps, but it is tight, and it caught Lucy Charles Barclay out, and it looks like it's catching a few others out as well as at the front. It is Royal and Hauser still, and Vincent Lewis. He's seen the swim jersey disappear down the road. He had a disappointing end to the race last time around. He's got plenty to prove. Taylor Reed sitting behind him as well. Jonas Schoenberg, Martin Van Riel, Seth Ryder, who's been so good on the bike and will be looking to pick up some bike points. The bike points are really between Ryder and Velasa, and look at them sitting in seventh and eighth. Yeah, they might both miss out on the points though. Yeah, it actually, you, you want to ask the question why the uh, why Aaron Royal and Matt Hauser are going so hard on the front as well. Uh, there's a big, you know, split for, for it being only halfway through the bike type of thing. They're already like almost 30 seconds odd back from the guys. But there is another short shoot. There is, there is. That's, yeah, I think maybe perhaps they'll want to go for the swim short shoot and the bike short shoot here, and they've just noticed that that's, that, that wave and that part has given them that extra gap on the, on the swim that they probably usually wouldn't have always had. Well, Vincent Lewis knows he needs the short shoot. But Matt Hauser, well, he's your Scorpions teammate, but do you think he's going to slow down and let Vince catch up for the overall? Oh, I don't think so. He's a racer. Well, you can he's see looking though. behind, though. and he, Well, there you go. He is letting him catch up a little bit. He knows he's got a short shoot. doesn't want Aaron Royal to take the other one. Matt obviously can take both and get two, as we see confirmation there that the Aussie picks up the swim championship jersey. And but they've let the group come back together, and that could be because Matt Hauser wants to make sure Benson Lewis has a chance to pick up the second short shoot and figure in the overall and help the Scorpions to second place in the uh, in the team's championship. Of course, in the teams, you get, uh, well, there's 320,000 US dollars split across the teams. The team that finishes in first position, well, those athletes are going to pick up a cheeky 15 grand each and then 10 grand, seven and a half, uh, five and two and a half. Hauser wins that one. Lewis wins nothing. And neither does Reed and Royal. We call him in the drop zone, just just looking at the timings here, Mario Mola, three-time world champion, is is in danger of getting cut. Jake Bertwistle, who has underperformed across the course of the season, but is fantastic as a racer, and we've seen him dominate. He's in. He's a chance of getting carved out as well. Yeah, this is absolutely fascinating racing. It really is. We wouldn't normally see Johnny Brownlee this far back. He is the current series leader at the moment, but he's really been thrown back by that swim. Interestingly, we did get an opportunity to see Christian Blumenfeld, the gold medalist from Tokyo, right past our screens and not looking at all smooth. No, I mean, it's very difficult to come off a 70.3 race and then come straight into such a short race here as well with Kenji oh, Nina having a problem Kenji again. Oh. That's three races That's in a row, hard. I think. That's tough for Nina. He's seventh overall in uh, in the championship stands. He's had a really fantastic couple of weeks with sixth and fifth uh, after being eliminated in the first race. He customised himself to Super League racing very well. There is Alex Sheehan, Johnny Brownlee. Those two are in the race for the overall championship lead along with Hayden Wilde, who is also back there in that group. So there is your three championship leaders. Vasco Velasa now on the front. He wants that bike points. He is on nine bike points. Seth Ryder is on 12. So if Vasco Velasa can take the full five, well, it all depends on where Seth Ryder comes across the line. And he is in that group, though. So what happens there will determine a $20,000 bonus for the bike overall. Has been very hard fought out across the course of the... And I can't see Ryder there. Ryder would be in the Eagles. Is he sitting in third position there? It's tough to see from that high angle. He definitely is in that group. Yeah, there's so definitely Larson a right. needs to do what he can control, don't he? He just has to stay on the front and hope it shakes out well behind him. Yeah, you could. It's going to be quite interesting because they're coming out the shoes here and Vasco is, there is one guy between them. So it's going to be interesting on the points where, where this ends up here. Well, it all comes to transition. He's three points ahead. It's five, it goes 5 4 3 2 1. So if Ryder can come out, you know, even two positions back, he's still going to take the points. My addition is not awesome. Van Reel then with the shoes on. Big group coming in now. There is Taylor Reid. He got eliminated first out last time. He doesn't want that to happen again. And across the line comes Van Reel. And then Ryder. 
So Ryder had the good transition there. He will win the bike jersey. He had a three-point lead coming in. It's Velasa who had a slow one, and he's behind with Vincent Lewis. Wow, interesting results coming out here. Oh, my goodness me, what a sprint that was. How <laughs> does wow. Martin Van Riel do this to himself? Martin Van Riel was on four points. He's never going to win it. But he's a racer. Why not? So Go for he it. tried to steal it. <laughs> he tried to steal it from Ryder. Ryder gets it, though. He'll pick up 20 grand. Velasa and Lewis behind them. And this race is really splitting up as, uh, well, you can see they're slowing down now. But who's that coming up the outside? Christian Blumenfeld. He doesn't care about this. He's off. He's off. He doesn't hasn't even read the rules. I he's like, it... I was going to win this by 100 miles for no reason at all. He might, he might what have, a good man. He might make everyone the 90-second rule yet at this pace, Will, if he keeps going on this at this pace. <laughs> I love this guy so much. He's an absolute warrior. These are all his best mates behind him. He's like, I don't care. I'm off. I'm off. It doesn't matter. But he's going he's gonna to get a bit more rest. Christian Blumenfeld, and I, it reminds me of all the other times we've had the Eliminator. He's done exactly the same thing. Continually won the stages for no other reason than because he loves to win stuff. And behind comes Aiden Wilde at the head of a group. Matt Hauser uh, is just jogging it in. And then we start looking at the bubble. And those athletes in the back of screen, we're going to see people start to get eliminated. This is interesting tactics from Blumenfeld. Look at, look at him. He's working hard. He's not jogging. He doesn't look like Flora Duffy there. Does he know the rules? I'm pretty sure he does. What he wants to do is make sure the rest of them behind him are tired and, and don't get as much rest because we know the clock starts clicking the moment he comes across the finish line. Yeah, I think, I mean, he actually looked back there and wondered where is everyone? So he goes to question, perhaps he might, he might be a little bit on the bubble, but I think he's kind of backed off a little bit. His cadence was really, really high there at the start and he was asking the question to everyone else on the first round. But I think, yeah, as Christian Brunenfeld rounds uh, the U-turn here, just by transition, we'll be able to get a, get a see of everybody and see what, what the guys behind are thinking and what they're going to do. Confirmation that Martin Van Riel picks up the second short shoot. It was very close between him and Ryder. Ryder took the overall, but Van Riel gets the short shoot, as does uh, Matt Hauser in the swim. And Christian Blumenfeld's just having a good old run for no real reason other than to deny some other people the run points. And it comes down to a two-point gap for the run overall between Hayden Wilde and Vincent Lewis. Now, Wilde is 10.7 seconds back, you can see there. Lewis is in that pack as well. If Wilde can stay ahead of Vincent Lewis as they come across the line, he will pick up the $20,000 and deny Vincent again after Matt Hauser denied him the $20,000 in the swim. So he'll come second in two different jerseys. There's Hauser ahead of Schomburg. Royal and Van Riel having a chat. Lewis will know this. Lewis knows he needs to beat Wild and put a couple of people between them. With Blumenfeld taking the full amount, and I don't know, maybe he's thinking now, why did I do this? I'm all by myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused. I think everyone's a little bit confused. I mean, he's going to win it. You know, that's that's he can't lose it from this point. So, you know, I think he's he's a racer. I think he likes to, I think a lot of people probably ask the question, why is that going on? But I think it's quite cool. You know, this is Super League. Why should you follow the rules? Why can't you just go for it? Absolutely. Don't follow the rules. Well, he does. <laughs> That's what he does. And, and Christian Blumenfeld, if you go back and look through the tapes of the Eliminators on YouTube, uh, Christian Blumenfeld's done this since we started back in Hamilton Island. It was the very first format. He knew exactly what he was doing. As tucked in behind Jonas Schomburg is Hayden Wilde from Martin Van Riel. Vincent Lewis is there as well. So we'll get the confirmation on the run points in the end as well. Good to Seth see Ryder you. definitely won the bike by four points over Velasa, who, or actually by five points over Velasa in the end. And Blumenfeld, well, Blumenfeld's doing his job for the team, I suppose, for the Rhinos and taking those five points for the Rhinos. I, I think he's sort of paying me back, isn't he, for saying he wasn't looking that smooth on the bike. He's like saying, do you know what? <laughs> I'm going to stick it to all of you guys. And he's absolutely miles ahead. He's looking back down the road. Is he slightly confused? I don't think so. Great to see Jonas Schumber back in there from Germany. You know, expected big things at the start of the series from the tall German athlete. But he hasn't been born that well, hasn't been feeling too good. But he's right in the mix today. And as is Aaron Royal, who uh, hasn't been on top for this series so far. I think Aaron Royal must be sprinting here to get some extra team points, I think, perhaps for their team as well. That seems like a great thing to do for Team Cheetahs. But I think it's the first time that the Rhinos have picked up all of the points here with Christian Blumenfeld coming across first place. Sprint finisher. Vincent Louis almost going down. Yeah, he has. Royal comes in second. Where's Wild? It's Yee, Wild, Lewis. So that means that Wild 
takes the run overall unconfirmed. So Lewis misses out on another $20,000 as the rest come across the line. We'll get you updated on who gets eliminated on the run. Max Studer was the first. Yannick Schaufler, Jake Bertwistle and Tamas Toth are all in danger. We've just cut away from it there, but I'll get you an update. Bertwistle is a 26 9, Toth a 29 9. So it looks like, unless Schaufler is still out on course, uh, Marco van der Stel, and I think we still have one to come across. We're looking back down the road, may we not see any more athletes. We may coming, not, maybe it's Marco van der Stel, and it was Toth who was eliminated in the previous. I'll just get you an update on that. Just watching, uh, that's interesting, just watching Hayden Wilde having a little look, uh, a chat with his manager. They wasn't happy about something, pointing out something on the road. They must have been their finish. When they came around here just around the finishing point, a lot of the athletes actually ended up going into the barrier almost when they came through, which was pretty uh, pretty scary to watch. But luckily, none of them went down, which is good to see. And uh, they're coming through a transition and just trying to obviously get their transition area and racking and everything done. We can see Vincent Louis with elastic bands in his mouth uh, and just busy putting the elastic bands on his shoes. And the athletes have very little time here to, to be able to obviously put all their sessions, their stuff together, get their shoes in the right position, remembering that all their shoes need to actually stay inside the box after the third round as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things. You don't want to make mistakes here and get a penalty from it. All right, we're going to throw down now to Kate on the ground as we get ready for stage two. Yeah, that's right. Thanks a lot, guys. We've got Max Cedar here. He um, was eliminated after the bike round. So you, uh, sorry, after that, you managed to get run in. The pace, the, the blistering pace that's going on out there. How, how was it? Yeah, unfortunately, it was not so great racing for me. Uh, I got quite quickly eliminated, but uh, it was a uh, good series of racing now with the Super League. Um, racing for me was not so good, but I enjoyed the experience. I hope and hope come uh, back next year with a better performance. But uh, I'm happy about the uh, Eagles team who is leading. I also in the last races con con contribute with some the, points. Um, how was the bike out there? Was it fast or was it steady? Was the, was the cornering really aggressive? Yeah, cornering was really aggressive. The bike... Uh, it's really fast, also quite windy, so it's a great challenge. Uh, yeah. And transitions, are they nice and smooth, or is everyone rushing really hard to get out there to, to get on the run as quick as possible? Yeah, I missed the first transition, I didn't get my helmet quickly enough on, and then uh, the group was gone. So they, those are key points I struggled today with, and they had Super League, every single mistake, it, you miss. Oh, you did so well, well done out there. Awesome, Max. Good to see you guys celebrating for Team Eagles. Thanks so much for talking to us. Bad luck today, Max. We're going to get you down to the second race of the men's. Okay, we are back and confirmation. Matt Hauser and Martin Van Riel have the short shoots. Yannick Schaufler, Kenji Nina and Max Studer are your three eliminated athletes and we go again in this one. It's about conservation and not being eliminated. So this is all about tactics for everyone except for Christian Blumenfeld, who will go on to win by three minutes probably because he just loves to race that way. We'll see how it all uh, plays out. Everything's been decided. Confirmation that Hayden Wilde won the $20,000 overall for the run jersey. And there is nothing else left to play for except for Ego. And to have a good start in this swim, Hauser closest to you, won at the last time out into the water they go again fair old waves coming in here too and it can be very unsettling that period of time when you feel like you're swimming on the spot richard murray he's almost swimming backwards yeah it, lo uh, it looked like those come through it looked like the waves here they're getting absolutely pounded um and some of the athletes further back if you had a really slow start there that's really not the way you want to start the first swim they're only like 50 meters or 20 meters in here and they haven't they're, they're almost going backwards more than they are forwards. Well, we've got a lot of sound on our screen, so it's difficult to pick it up. But there is one athlete way out in front, uh, Will, trying to work out who it is now. But they took a bit of a battering there, to say the least. They went backwards, and then they were hit by another wave. Yeah, it looked like Matt Hauser went on the far left there, and he's pretty good in the surf. So yeah, I'm not certain whether it's him in the front or who it is, but um, it, it definitely he'll be one that'll be up there in the pointy end. But it's difficult to see a lot of glare on the water a little bit, but uh, it looks like they've actually spread out a lot more than they have on the first the first round. 
Yeah, cumulative uh, fatigue, I suppose. And when you look back at the run splits from the previous stage, because it had split up so much and there were athletes who were trying not to be eliminated, Mario Mola was the man that ran the fastest run split. He was on the cusp of being eliminated. Jake Bertwistle as well, Tamas Toth as well. They all ran sub three minutes for that 1.6K run, so they had to punch it to make sure that they weren't going to be eliminated. And, and that is the beauty of the eliminator, is that if you find yourself in that position after a bike, you really have to spend yourself a little bit more to make sure you stay away, whereas uh, a good start, a good swim can see you conserve or at least dole out your energy a little bit more um, evenly. And Matt Hauser, I think, is out the front again. Ooh, no, I think that's a no. cheetah. That's looking like an orange sleeve. Can... I'm liking the look of that one. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Aaron Royal. That's a scorpion. Scorpion? I think that's a scorpion. Maybe you can see orange. something different on your screen. So you've got to Perhaps get your I eyes can. checked, Will. I think <laughs> no, that might be I a do, cheetah. Actually. That's, an or that's an orange <laughs> cheetah. And potentially... It could be Brownlee at the front. Hard to see. Um, well, that's, uh, yeah, we've got another cheater up there as well. It, it's difficult to pick out who it is, but I think we can safely say that uh, the athletes Ace have is been, on, though. It is on, wow. and they've been separated a lot more than in the first round. I think some of the athletes were saying they expected the water to be just a little bit calmer later on in the afternoon, but it's certainly not. It's looking a lot more tricky than in the women's race. Yeah, I mean, it's Super League. It's unexpected, and uh, I think, you know, the waves, it looks like the guys have got much more of a pounding on the waves a little bit than some of the girls. I mean, the one start they did, but uh, it seems like the, there's, there's going to be more of a split here as well, and it's very hard on this course. You, to try and pass on this course is very, very difficult on the bike. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see who comes out here. I think and it's going to be Royal. I mean, I mean, if that's a cheetah and he's at the front and here comes a wave, it could... Well, none of them are going to catch that one, but it was probably Aaron Royal at the front uh, as they come together a little bit more. Uh, that looks like... Vince Louis on the left looks Lewis like Lewis in the middle, yep. And to be fair, Vincent Lewis had... Well, then his title rivals was at least Vincent Lewis had a swim that's 20 seconds faster than anyone who's in the title chase when they came last time. Someone's just gone way left there as out of the water comes Reed. Taylor Reed, Johnny Brownlee is up there this time as well. Then there's a bit of a big gap back uh, to Blumenfeld. But Reed off the front, and Reed has figured in the swims throughout. Um, he's nearly denied Vincent Lewis a short shoot back in Munich. Uh, Brownlee is there, Lewis is there, Van Riel is there, and Royal is there. And that is your group of five heading into the second stage. And when you've had a good swim, you can really measure yourself in the second uh, run and the second bike. Whereas when you get back to the group here, and that's Hauser coming through second time, you can see that's really taxed him that first stage, making sure he got that 20,000 in the bag. Vincent Louis had a great transition here. Wow, that was really fast watching him come through. Johnny Brownlee in second, I think Taylor, Taylor Reed, and then it was uh, Aaron Royal coming. But uh, also Blumenfeld, really high up. He's moved up from the first round, uh, so that's going to put him in a good place on the bike. Yeah, we don't normally see him stay as close as he does uh, on the bike. In, in recent times in Super League, he's had to really push the bike. Um, but, you know, very technical course. He's had a better swim, and there he is, just ahead of Hayden Wilde with Shachar Sagiv there as well. Uh, jo Jonas Schomburg, and there's Seth Ryder at the back. He won't be happy with that. But he has, again, pushed himself very hard to pick up that money. Jonas Schomburg hasn't had the series that he would have liked. There's no doubt about that. Confirmation comes in as Ryder, Velasa, Van Riley are top three overall in the bike. Ryder picks up the 20,000. Nothing for second. We don't do that here. Vasco Velasa, unlucky. Um, but there's still plenty to play for. He's the top five in the championship. But, gee, Vincent Lewis had a good swim there in the end. And there he is at the front of this race. Just sitting in, Brownlee off the front. What Vincent Lewis needs to see is Hayden Wild and Vasco Velasa, Alex Yee and Johnny Brownlee dig as much effort as they can out of themselves in this second stage if he is going to have any chance. And for Johnny, the championship permutations are he needs to beat Hayden Wild, he needs to beat Alex Yee. Now, if Vincent Lewis does win, he needs to finish in second position. Vince needs to beat Johnny and Hayden by two spots. So and I'm not even going to go further into it than that. We'll get to it in stage three. <laughs> Otherwise, you, it's like a goodwill hunting situation with all these uh, a whiteboard full of permutations. Safe to say, I'll keep it easy for everybody. I think what is safe to say is the four guys at the top and the four guys have excelled in, in this series. They really have. 
Um, and I think they're going to be the ones that we're going to be see fighting out at the top, without a doubt, for the overall victory here in, in Malibu. Vasco Velaza, the young Portuguese athlete, he's really impressed me on the bike this season. He has, yeah. He is very, very strong. I mean, he's one of the strongest riders, apart from Seth Ryder, who just picked up that uh, pretty 20,000 US dollars. Always the same price of winning the, each round as well, the same as Florida Duffy got. And uh, I think the Vasco, you can see him, he, he went around doing the bike course militarization at like a million Ks an hour. I was very impressed to watch. And uh, he's up in the pointy end of things. Uh, it's interesting to see how the whole group is also a little bit more together compared to the last round with that wave that really strung things out. Vasco also getting in the aero bars here, extremely low, quite a, quite a compact and strong athlete. Do you think, I mean, Vasco, he, he leaves nothing out there. What he's done is he's delivered it time and time again for Hayden Wild. And, you know, I don't know what the what Michelle Dillon has told the Sharks. Have they said go a bit harder, go off the front in stage two, try and drag people with you, try and try and make it easier for Hayden Wild, who's sitting at about eighth wheel at the moment. Um, it's it's difficult to it's difficult to know what happens inside these races. Obviously, there was a discussion between Matt Hauser and Vincent Lewis for the swim jersey, uh, but it didn't happen in the end because of those waves that mixed everybody up like we hoped that they would. So yep. the last are off the front. I think that's a very good call. Well, I think the teams, team taxi is the first time we were, not one of the first times, we're really seeing it in action. Uh, Vasco Velasha going to the front. There's nothing to gain here apart from obviously keeping the people from being eliminated within your group and trying to get Hayden Wild the best chance that he can. Obviously, there's team points and there's prize money as well available for the athletes. So this is a completely race within a race and somebody's going to get eliminated in a few seconds. But Vasco Velasha is a racer though, isn't he? He's just the sort of athlete that you love to watch races. Because he, he leaves nothing out there at all. And for me, he's almost like a mini Christian Blumenfeld. He's had to work really hard at his uh, swim. And he's the youngest athlete racing here. But he's so hungry and he just loves to race. So I think that's all part of it. We can see him just coming around that 180 degree turn now. Really attacking out of it when he doesn't have to. Yeah, it's crazy to see the racing. I mean, that's what's so awesome about Super League racing. It is full on. There is no time to think. Uh, you've got to just go for it and uh, all the top players up in the mix which is great to see and uh, it's going to be interesting to see who's on the bubble here will who, who do you, who's getting eliminated well at the moment on my timing sheets i think it's going to be mario mola who's uh, about three or four seconds off the back at least last time they came through of course someone gets eliminated at the end of the bike discipline and on each lap of the run vasco velasa in the bars probably the only man who's got the bars out there he's had it every, every time um, and just putting his head down with two sharks at the front, doing the job for Hayden Wild. As you say, all the players in behind, but there's Mario Mola now eight seconds back. Now, this guy's a three-time world champion, and he's won those world championships. It wasn't ten years ago. It was it was three or four years ago. So, wow, how, how Super League can expose even the best athletes if they're not at 100% on top of their game. Uh, we've seen that with Mario across the course. Of the, and I feel bad even saying that because he's so nice. I feel <laughs> yeah, bad no. even mentioning it. Super League is it's, it's a different beast. It's a very different form. I mean, it's extremely explos explosive. I mean, Christian Blumenfeld and, and the likes of uh, Martin Van Riel, they're both Red Bull athletes. They love this type of racing. You know, they go for it. There's no hold on. And, uh, yeah, it definitely goes to show that there's a different style of racing. This corner here looks extremely... Uh, it looks really sharp. I mean, from the top, it gives it a real perspective. And this, these courses are very, very tight. You've got to be careful. You can't be, a, you know, a second off, otherwise you might be in trouble. Yeah, I mean, I think we've got to big up Mario Mola a bit, the fact that he's come here and raced. It hasn't gone well for him. I think he just struggles. You know, he's not a powerful athlete. You know, he's incredibly quick and he has struggled. Uh, you know, but fair play to him. You know, he's been there every race, giving it his all. But as you said, Will, you know, we are talking about a three times world champion. You know, the man is so talented. It won't be the last that we've seen of him. You know, he's had a tough year. Anyway, back to you, Will, because they're just coming into transition. Mm. Yeah, and who's that man who's going to lead it out? Probably Christian Blumenfeld. And we can say goodbye to him then on the uh, on the run, if that's what happens. No, it is going to be Velasa who comes out first. Blumenfeld second from Brownlee. There is Wild Reed, And I think at the back there was Van Riel and Vincent Lewis. And that is your group now of eight men. So there was a few more than that. A couple of people have gotten left behind in transition. But all of those men are going to be safe. Already the short shoots have been decided. Hauser and Van Riel. So in that front group, Van Riel is the man. Hauser looks like he is uh, struggling a little bit back. He's 25 seconds back. He's on the bubble. Schomburg, Toth, Bert Whistle has dropped right off. So it looks like we will have lost Mario Mola at the end of the bike. As he comes across the line, and it's Bert Whistle and Tamas Toth 
who are in danger, along with Schomburg and Hauser, on each lap of this run. So, it was interesting. Johnny Brownlee. It was interesting. Three, Go on, mate. Johnny Brownie was pointing something out there. I'm not sure exactly what he was pointing out there, but he, he looked like he maybe wasn't happy with something or he was telling one of his teammates to pull up, or I'm not sure what it was. Well, there's a lot of pressure coming on Johnny Brownlee's shoulders in this race. Uh, he hasn't won Super League before. He hasn't won an event either. He said he was super nervous coming into Jersey last weekend where he got pipped in a sprint finish from Alex G because he got eliminated early on in the Eliminator back in Jersey two years prior. He doesn't forget things like that. He's had such a good 12 to 24 months now. He sorted out his nutrition. He sorted out his health and he's back to the man we know and love and the man who just who sat on the podium 42 times in a row between 2011 and 2014 which is just unbelievable and he's got Hayden Wild and Alex Yee the new brigade just snapping at his heels for this overall championship win Blumenfeld, Brownlee, Velasa and then Wild are your front four all of these men will be safe at the back we can confirm that Mario Mola is gone and Bert Whistle is 10 seconds down on Tamas Toth, but he's obviously a fantastic runner, 11 times Australian middle and long distance champion uh, as a junior, and then one of the best runners in triathlon. But can he run that gap down? We're going to find out. We want to see the back of this race as we get over the line again at the front. Well, it's just a jog for Christian Blumenfeld and Johnny Brownlee and Velasa and Wild. But at the back, it's Toth and Bert Whistle looking to avoid elimination. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether this is going to be uh, Blumenfeld is back after the third round. But um, yeah, it's uh, there are people here on the cusp being eliminated. And in this racing, you really need to conserve yourself. All you want to do is get through to the next round with as enough energy as you can and lay it down on the last event. But interesting, right. just watching Blumenfeld and Brownlee um, well, you know, they're working pretty hard, you know, and the other guys are getting a little bit dropped off. It is only seconds, but I, I see that Johnny Brownlee's tactics have slightly changed on this run. There you go. Confirmation. He couldn't run it down. He gets the uh, the eliminated banner and Jake Burt whistle. Well, that caps off what's been a tough month for Jake Burt whistle. Um, difficult for him. And as you say, if you're at 95%, well, that's not enough when it comes to Super League. And he couldn't race down Thomas Toth and Jonas Schomburg, another man who hasn't performed as he probably would have liked. And now it's a, a warm down jog, discussions there between Wild and Velasa. You can see them talking to each other about how are we going to do this thing at the end? Vasco, how are you going to help deliver me this championship title? How much money do you want? What are we going to do about it? Uh, Alex Yee there on the left as well is your other championship protagonist. And the rest of the men know that they're safe from elimination. They warm themselves down and they get ready for that all-out shootout in stage three where we're going to decide our champion. We saw, if you missed the women's race, Jess Learmonth won in London. She won in Munich. She won in Jersey, and she got it stolen at the back end by Georgia Taylor-Brown, who finally uh, managed to make it work with another second place, four second places in a row, delivers her the championship title. So Johnny Brownlee will take solace from that. Who's, he's finished, uh, he hasn't won a race yet either, but he's sitting one point clear. Isn't that why we love Super League though? Because it is unpredictable. I mean, your money would have been on Jess Learmont, but Georgia Taylor-Brown takes it. As we can see, Johnny Brown just coming through, and I think you're absolutely right, Will. He's come back into the form of his life, and, and I think, you know, the fans, the triathlon fans, Super League fans, have loved seeing this because he delivers great performances time and time again. He's meticulous in his preparation, and he's meticulous how he races. Blumenfeld, though, deciding that he's not hanging about again. Could this be not that he actually wants to get his heart rate up a bit. He doesn't want to go too easy, that actually this feels better to him than going slower, as we can see now he heads to the finish line. I don't think I don't think Christian knows how to go easy. But, no. you know, I think Johnny Johnny is, is quite a smart racer. He's been around the block. And Alex Yee and Hayden Wild, Vasco Velasha, the, the new new guns on the block, coming through here as well together, being really smart. And, uh, yeah, the guys uh, just, you know, conserving energy, being smart to the, for the next round. The shoes come off, the head straight back on. It's all business. Jonas Schomburg is at the back of this pack as he crosses the line. The German who's had, you know, Super League's been such a big part of his progression. There is a 70.3 world champion, Gustav Eden, who came across the line 16 seconds back in that one. So he'll figure uh, in this racing. 
and Schomburg has been eliminated. So Jonas Schomburg, the German, is the man to make way at the end of stage two. He talks to Leslie Oni Perio and Cassandra Bogran, the two French women who finished in the top seven, I think, uh, in the women's race and are now supporting the men as they get ready and they set up transition for stage three. Yeah, this is the this is the this is the real and important round. The first two ones for the top guys. You don't want to get eliminated, and now it comes to the you know the cream. This is the cream of the crop here. This is this is the best athletes in the entire world here racing in Malibu. First time Super League triathlon's been in the U.S. Eh? and that's amazing to see. It is really really great. So a big crowd having watched on, and some of them race this morning are about to watch the best in the world. We'll go down now to Kate. Yeah, we're here in the elimination station with Mario Mola. Sorry, mate. How, <laughs> you've got an absurd number of world titles, and it just goes to show that Super League Triathlon is a punishing old race. It is, definitely. It's, I knew it was never going to be easy, and definitely, I mean, it's a very challenging course. The, the water is rough, so having a good swim, as always, it's important, and I didn't manage to do that today. Unfortunately, I have to cheer for the guys from the side today, but it is what it is. No surprise that the Kiwis and the Aussies did better in the water. Uh, bad luck, Mario. Thanks for talking to us. We'll Thank see you, you next time. Thank you. And we've got plenty more action coming for you after that one. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm letting you go. But you don't, I mean, you, or you can hang around. You can do the presenting. That's what we need. Uh, yeah, we've got plenty more action to come in this next race in the Super League Men's Triathlon Championship. So let's stick with, let's stick with the action now. All right, we go again. I barely taking a breath. Didn't even have a chance to eat some of my jelly snakes. We've got to just crack on, and get on with it, and decide. Exactly. Uh, who is going to win this championship? Uh, all the big names are there. Of course, Mario, I mean, he never has a single negative thing to say about anything, and he'll be cheering on uh, his compatriots as we decide who will win this. All four championship protagonists are there. Johnny Brownlee leading by a point coming into this. Vincent Lewis, he's four points back. Hayden Wild only a point back. And Alex G is two points back. And of course, well, 20 points for the champ for the race win, then 18, 16, 14, etc. So we'll try to keep you abreast of this one. But safe to say, there are four men, potentially five if Vasco Velasa has everything go his way, who uh, have got their eyes on the championship when it will be decided in about 14 minutes. One more time into the water here on the Malibu Pacific Coast. Vincent Lewis, second from the right. And Scorpion alongside Matt Hauser on the left. The Cheetahs have a better run to the first boy. Johnny Brownlee is one of those men, as is Aaron Royal, who has led out to the boy. So Brownlee will be looking to take Royal with him. In the middle, the Eagles featuring Gustav Eden and Alex Yi, who is, a, who is there for the championship. <laughs> And the Sharks with Taylor Reed, the big swimmer, and Hayden Wild, the championship chaser. So over the first wave they go into the water for the final time in Super League in 2021. And the chop continues to get up. Those Santa Ana winds that blow away the mist here every morning in Malibu have caused a little bit of chop as well. The sun shining down on the Pacific. And it's what about Vincent Lewis here. What can he do? He needs to have one of the big swims because he's four points back in the championship. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to be important for Vince. He had, a, he had a really tough race last weekend in Jersey Island, so he's going to want to make up for that. And it's going to be interesting to see with Christian Blumenfeld. He's definitely the wild card that's come in, and, and, and he is just that. You know, He's extremely strong at least. He's won the first two sections of this race, and uh, it's all going to be up to the you know to the pointy end. Alex Yi as well, extremely strong runner. Hayden Wild wants to be in the mix there. The guys are really, really tightly packed coming into this first boy. They've talked about it. They've discussed it together. They've spent a month together. They've raced three times. And now it just comes down to the final 10 or 15 minutes as to who takes out this championship title and 100,000 US dollars. And at the front, it looks like Taylor Reed once again. On the feet, it looks like Johnny Brownlee, which is exactly where he would want to be. Vincent Lewis is off his shoulder at the top of screen. Behind Brownlee is Alex Yi. Hayden Wild looks to be down there in the middle of the pack, unless that's him at the front. I think that would be Taylor Reed, though. 
It's tough when they're both wearing purple. They've both got New Zealand uh, on their sleeve. But this group, the cream of the crop, no stragglers off the back. We will lose someone at the end of the bike, but this is all about the front of the race now and nothing left in the tank. Who has it after four weeks of racing? Any predictions from my commentary team? Well, it's got to be Johnny Brownlee, hasn't it? I mean, you wouldn't oh, bet you're against so him. You're so biased. No, not being biased at all, Will. No, he's in the form of his life. Van San Luis is going to be tough. You know, are we going to have another Olympic champion take the men's race? You know, you can't bet against Christian Blumenfeld, but he's throwing a spanner in the works there in terms of points. I know you've got them all written down, but it's complicated at the top end because, of course, we have Brownlee, Wild, Yi and Luis that can all win here today, the overall series. And uh, I think Vance Luis, after that disappointment last week, is going to be very hungry to do his absolute best here. He doesn't like to settle for, for second or third. No, I think, as you said, I think the young guns of uh, Alex, Alex E and Hayden Wild, they're going to be really up there in the mix. Johnny Brownlee has been so consistent all, all, you know, all through all the series. There's a wave coming here as well. This might actually benefit some guys. One or two, one person oh, just missing the wave oh, nearly. There. Now, I think it might be, looks like Vincent Louis' stroke. I might be wrong. Yeah, it is. I think that's Vincent Lewis. I, I think, think you're right. It's going to be interesting. Vince off the front, so he's had a very good, very good swim here. And Well, the wave brings everyone up, or brings a few people up with him. So his good work has seen, well, it's evaporated now. It's hit out of the water first. Um, comes, who's there at the top ben of the screen? It's difficult to see. Yeah, Ben Real, you're right. We'll Taylor see Reed when they comes. come up to shoot. Reed, Ben Real. They both caught that wave and caught their way up to Vincent Lewis. So we've run all the stats through stats forecast, through Sports Forecast, our official stats partner. And Johnny, at the start of this race, had a 50% chance of winning overall. Vincent Lewis, 20%. Hayden Wild, 17%. Alex Yee, 10%. Vasco Velasa, 1%. Obviously, a lot of water has gone under the bridge since then. And at the front is Reed, Van Riel, and Lewis. Bit of a gap back to Brownlee, Ryder, and then Velas is there. And down in 10th and 11th, 10 seconds off the pace, is Yi and Wild. So Johnny Brownlee is in the, the box seat at the moment. If he beats both Wild and Yi, he can also finish second behind Vincent Lewis and still win. And also have the a overall. look down at, at, at Hauser as well. He was way off the pace in this one, 16 seconds back down in uh, 14th place. So. A different, difficult swim for the young Australian there, but uh, they're not going to get left behind these guys. They might have had a few seconds break out of the swim, but this front group is all getting back together again. Don't yeah. forget that Van Riel and Hauser are the two men with a short shoot. They're going to be uh, picked up in the run. Hauser probably not going to figure in the overall. Van Riel very much could, and that could change the complexion of this championship race as well. So they're cornering so hard here. Oh, there was a little bit of a twitch there from Vincent Louis. Uh, these these guys are extremely strong riders as well. Vincent Louis and uh, Mott Van Riel. It looks like they've got a tiny little bit of a gap here behind them to, to the likes of Blumenfeld on the front from the Rhinos. So they've got two really, really good athletes, the Rhinos, here in the front, which is which is good for their team. It's working out well for Vincent Lewis too. He wants to take these two men with him and then eventually beat them and put them between the rest of the pack. And that way he could actually steal this championship title despite finishing eighth. Uh, last week. He needs to make these two work. No doubt he's telling them to do that. Meanwhile, Christian Blumenfeld does what he does and he's going to try and drag up Alex Yee and Hayden Wild and Johnny Brownlee into this group. But Brownlee had a pretty good swim and I don't know where he is on the timesheets, but he's fallen down a little no, bit. He's there he the, is. He's, he's in, in the, the pack. Yeah. I was getting a bit twitchy there, uh, Will, but uh, look, he's, he's definitely in there. All the cheaters are in this chase pack. But you, don't, you definitely don't want to be near the back. I mean, Johnny is quite far back here. It's quite difficult to pass on this course as well, especially on the bike section. It's very, very tight. Uh, but it looks like it's only about a you know a three to four second type of gap between behind towards Blumenfeld. And yeah, they're definitely going to have to make sure that they want to close this gap. They can't, they can't let it go out anymore. No, it's an interesting little group as well. As well. Martin Van Riel, such a tasty rider for me. Love to watch him ride a bike. And Reed as well. Um, he wants to work hard for Van Son Luis. So uh, these top three, Blumenfeld four seconds behind. You're absolutely right, Rich. They do not want to get this uh, gap any bigger than it is already.
Yeah, yeah. Well, it's around the same as it was after the first lap, and I think I think Yee and Wild can thank their lucky stars that uh, Christian Blumenfeld came into this race because he knows how to bike his way up to a front group, and he'll do all the work to deliver those two championship protagonists. He's not doing it on purpose. He's just doing it because he wants to win the race, and he's used to biking up to the front pack after a swim. There's Brownlee on screen. It's another thing to mention, Gustav Eden as well from, from Norway, 70.3 world champion from last weekend. Also having a bit of a, a tough one, you know, must be pretty heavy in the legs doing a half distance and then the following weekend doing a, doing a Super League race. Well, we saw it in Lucy Charles Barclay, didn't we? Especially with this kind of uh, course where you've really got to push the watts out of all of these dead turns and continually do it. There's not a lot of time to get into your, well, get into your stroke on the bike and get the cadence just smooth, uh, which is completely different to doing 90 Ks. And it's now Velasa who does his turn on the front as they bike up to the back. And Velasa will, well, he will be doing this for Hayden Wild. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, where's where's uh, Hayden Wild and Alex? You can see they're sitting back there. They've got two teammates uh, in in the front doing the work, which is which is great to see of the team team tactics really coming into play on this last event. With more points on offer, you saw the as it stands just then. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of changes in that pack. But Vincent Lewis needs to stay away as much as he possibly can. Meanwhile, this lot need to get up and join them because after this bike, it's just going to be 1.6 Ks between ourselves and a championship winner. One more lap to go on the bike. We've all come together here pretty much the whole field. Uh, you know, going. Oh, there's two athletes coming off the back, two cheaters actually falling off the back of that group, probably just from a bit of fatigue. Uh, it is pretty hard. I mean, three weekends or four weekends of racing now. I mean, the, the legs are tired for some of these athletes. And the athletes need to position themselves really well here because, as you rightly said, Richard, and you know this course inside and out, you've ridden it, it's incredibly narrow. So coming into transition, you've got to be in the right place. Yeah, no, you want to be right up near the front. The guys are looking around you as well. I think they've just been caught, and some guys are going to push through. Vasco Velasco showing his cards here again, uh, really putting it down, getting very low in his bike. Uh, and he's really, really good on this course. He goes round it uh, amazingly quickly. Well, it's, a, it's good to be on the front in some ways because it's so tight and technical. You always feel like someone's going to make a tiny error, especially with so much on the line. Uh, that was Fabian and Royal going around behind this pack. As at the front, the two Sharks look to position Hayden Wild. It is Velasco, of course, has championship uh, money of his own. He's in fifth position uh, to chase Reed behind him. Van Reel is there, he has the short shoot. Hauser has the other one, so you can discount him. It's going to be a runoff in the end, you would think, between Vincent Lewis, Alex G, Hayden Wild, and Johnny Brownlee. You probably have to back Alex G on that one. Uh, he ran his way back up to Hayden Wild, took five seconds out of him in Jersey, and then ran on to the win. But, wow, what happens after four weeks of racing? That's the question. Van Reel has the short shoot. And the Zooman felt. Whoa, as well as in here and look at him. <laughs> I just love to watch this racing. It's going to be all down to the run. This is what everyone's been waiting for. Uh, it, it, we're hoping we're going to get a sprint finish out of this, but the guys are definitely going to go hammer and nail. Uh, you think of Blumenfeld, he's going to go out like he's done the last two races. And look at the two athletes that have come off the back, Alessandro Fabian and, Al and uh, Aaron Royal, off the back. You know, this goes to show just how hard they're pushing it at the front of this race. Velasa onto the black carpet for the last time first. Blumenfeld and Reed as well. Racking the bike at the back of screen is Vincent Lewis. If he can have a good transition, he needs to. He needs to win this race. He needs to put athletes between. Ryder drops his bike as he does again. Velasa comes out. Three sharks in the top five, joined by Blumenfeld and Van Riel. So, Velasa could push his way up the championship standings if he wins this one. He knows that. Blumenfeld doesn't figure. Reed doesn't figure. Lewis is there, Van Riel doesn't figure, neither does Ryder. And then it's Wild, Yee and Brownlee all together, separated by three points as Hayden Wilds moves his way up to third position ahead of Van Riel. There's the short shoot in the background. Next time around, Van Riel's going to take that one. The pace too hot for Seth Ryder now. Wow, Velasa is pushing it at the front. Go on, Blumenfeld's going for it. You see him gritting the teeth here. Hayden Wild just sitting up on his shoulder with Martin Van Riel right behind him. This two, uh, yeah, these guys are really, really going hammer and nails. It's amazing to watch. Wild in the box seat now. There you can see Brownlee, Lewis, and Yi in the back of this group. They are the men chasing Hayden Wild. So it's for sure, it's probably, well, there's no gap between them at all. And we have to wait and see what Blumenfeld is going to do. And Velasa, who tucks in behind the Norwegian now. There's a little gap there, maybe a second. 
to this group of the three championship contenders. Wild can take this as it stands, he will. Does he have the legs? He didn't have it in London. Oh, he, sorry, he didn't have it. Well, he did have it in London. He won. He didn't have it in Jersey. Yeah, you've got to be careful, yeah. You don't want to go out too quickly. Uh, you know, with the likes of Blumenfeld on your shoulder, he can absolutely turn it on on the last two, 300 meters. And Vasco as well has also got a kick on him as well. So it uh, looks like they've, they've obviously made a small gap to the guys behind them as well. And the race, this is a race within a race as well, yeah. Oh, it so is. I can see touch of deja vu from Jersey with Johnny Brownlee on Alex G's shoulder. Interestingly, Vincent Luis is slightly dropping off that pace. Have these four gone on a little bit too early? Blumenfeld definitely not. He has all the experience that you'd expect for an Olympic champion to have, but it's Wild who's pushing it on now. Aiden Wild, one point back in the championship, 800 metres to go. Wild is trying to chase down Brownlee for the overall championship win. He is in the front. Van Reel is in third. He has the short shoot. There is Yee. He's run away from Brownlee, who's run away slightly from Vincent Lewis. Yee, the fastest runner in triathlon. Can he run his way back up to this pack? At the moment, he sits one point behind Hayden Wilde. He needs to beat him. He's in fifth right now, and he's doing his best to run onto the back of Velasa. I think he's done it. Yeah. Van Reel takes the short shoot and he's now the leader. Wild has someone to chase down. 400 metres to go in this race. Brownlee's off the back now. Lewis is off the back. Van Reel is leading. Wild needs to stay in second. He's got Blumenfeld behind him. Can Martin Van Reel win this race and 20 grand? And can Hayden Wild win the championship at 100 grand? That is the question that's going to be answered in the next 45 seconds time. Well, this is an athlete oh, wow. who knows how to win Super League. He won in the Arena Games back in Rotterdam. He had the short shoot. He's made the absolute most of that, but it looks like Hayden Wild is running him down. He's absolutely not giving up as a Belgian athlete now makes that 180 degree turn. He is there. It's going to be a foot race between Alex Yee and Hayden Wild. They're now 200 metres from the finish. Brownlee's dropped off the back. He is there in the white. There is Hayden Wild in the purple of the Sharks, and now Yee's right behind him. Can Yee run him down? If he beats him, then he's going to do it. It's out of these two men right there. You can see the pain on Hayden Wild's face. It all comes down to the last 100 metres, and it's going to be a sprint finish to the end between Hayden Wild and Alex Yee. Martin Van Riel is still leading. He's going to get swallowed up, is he? Up to the big screen they look. The last is still behind. He'll pick up key points. But it's Yee and Wild. Alex Yee going around the outside as well. Just up into the hip here of Martin Van Riel. It's going to come down to a sprint finish. It is. I think Wild's going to get dropped. I think Yee's going to be the one that does it. Has uh, Hayden Wild got another gear? I don't think he does. It's going to be Alex Yee for the championship. Can he take the race win as well? It's a sprint finish. And it's going to be Yee who takes it, I think. The championship and the race win. What a month for Alex Yee. He's gotten better and better. He came fifth, he came third, then he won in Jersey and maybe right now he's won the race to go along with the championship and second is Hayden Wild. Oh my goodness, they are flaked out down here. Racing. Speechless. Oh, what racing wow. last week? Well, what <laughs> racing this week? You could not expect any more. That was absolutely amazing. The two young guns from the from the UK and from New Zealand. Alex, you turned it on amazingly there. He has picked up the championship win, taking it by two tenths of a second from Martin Van Riel. Vasco Velasa in third takes key championship points and Hayden Wild, it came down to 1.6 seconds after a month. Vincent Lewis in sixth behind Blumenfeld, Brownlee in seventh, couldn't get it done. But those seven were streets ahead of everyone else and look at what Hayden Wild has given to this racing. Brownlee on the ground, those two had such a good battle last week and this time, well it was seven seconds in the end, slightly more than that. And Alex Yee, well he relies on his run, he's become a complete triathlete but when the run needs to be taken, he, can, he knows he's got it in the back pocket. Congratulated there by Gustav Eden.
Hayden Wild still down on the canvas. And his fellow eagle there, Seth Ryder, as well. And there is a very happy Tim Don, the team manager. Wild's on the ground. We hope he's okay. He's getting a little bit of attention from his team manager, Michelle Dillon. But you cannot accuse him of not putting in absolutely everything. And those two, well, they sprinted for the line, and it was two tenths in the end. Martin Van Riel. Goodness. Hey, man, you? do it. Hey, why? And let's have a look again at how the race finished up. And in another sprint finish, two in two weeks for Yee, and this time it's Martin Van really pips by two tenths ahead of Velasa. And everyone hit the deck. The black carpet had plenty of fallen soldiers on it. Well, that was some kind of racing from Alex Yee, who sat in and sat in and raced no, tactically not. and smart like he did last time around in Jersey. We didn't see him figure at the front at any point. And the only time he hit the front in this race was in the last, well, 10 metres. I would have said even less than that. And that's exactly how you win Super League races is to light your matches exactly when you need to and not before. We're going to go down now to Kate, uh, who's not leaving Alex Yee any time at all to catch his breath. <laughs> Alex Yee is trying to leave, but we're not going to let him because he is the man of the moment and he needs to talk to us. Alex Yee, congratulations. What a finish. Yeah, no, that was amazing. Uh... <laughs> because I told Martin he got it. But, um, oh, mate. Uh, yeah, the, 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 that was amazing. Like, I, um, yeah, I can't really believe it, to be honest. Like, uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. You take a moment, because you've just, you've only just done this, and it's been incredible. Tim, what would you oh, like Alex, to say the to the intensity out there, the, the way everyone was flying out to swim, the first lap of the bike, into the corners, how, how was that? Was that, was that really explosive? Yeah, definitely. That first race, I found so tough, I think. It's impossible to warm up for something like that because it's literally the like going as hard as you can, um, just, like straight off from the gun. And it was like for, for me, I feel like I warm up throughout the race. And uh, yeah, that first race was tough, and I didn't know how I'd fare first of it. But yeah, I, yeah, I can't believe it. And did you back off in that first and second race to save something, or was the pace just too aggressive for you to do that? Yeah, I, I mean, I went for some run points on the uh, on the uh, first race because I wanted um, just to get some more points for the Eagles. Uh, my boy Hayden as well was going for the run, Jay, so if I can help him at all, then that was something I'd love to do. So, yeah, yeah, it was, I don't know, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was fantastic watching you race, Alex. Such a brilliant race, Alex. And we, we, you know, we know you're a young guy, new to all of this, really, and showing such maturity to win in this kind of environment with this kind of complexity as well. There's so much going on, as you said, with Martin Van Riel. We're so impressed, and, oh, yeah. and we can see the emotion that it means to you. Yeah, no, I, I, it, yeah, it's, it's been amazing, and this month I feel like I've learned so much, which I don't think is only going to help me with Super League racing, but onwards into the future, and I think this is, like, such a good thing for our sport to have such short, exciting racing, like... Uh, famously the US has not been known to enjoy short course racing and look how many people are out here it's just amazing to see so yeah I'm really pleased to, uh, to put on a show for everyone today and yeah thanks to everyone yeah it was definitely an enjoyable show and as you're right we, we're surrounded by your, your friends and admirers and your new fans as well in the States now what we need to do immediately is get that trophy into your hands Alexi I'm just going to hand over now to the Super League Triathlon chairman and co-founder Lynn Blogger Slousey, take it away. Leonid Bogoslavsky, of course, part of the, the founding group of three with Michael Dolst uh, and Chris McCormack, who unfortunately can't be with us in this race. Um, and that is a beautiful trophy worth 30,000 euros as well. It's nice and heavy uh, from a, a sculptor who is close friends with Leonid. And Alex G gets his hands on it momentarily. And he also gets his hands on plenty of cash as well. 50,000 US dollars. And how good... Does Tim Don feel after taking it out in the men's as well? Of course, he got relegated to second in the women's after Flora Duffy's outstanding work. So some big shore dumpers taking some people out. 
on the swim. Vincent Lewis had some fantastic transitions. He knew he needed to lead from the front of this race if he was going to take the overall. He couldn't do it in the end. And each of our championship protagonists had a crack off the front. Uh, Christian Blumenfeld won two of those stages for no reason other than to pick up those points. And in the end, it came down to what we all hoped it would, which is a sprint finish between Van Riel, Yi, Wild, who couldn't do it, and Velasa. And on the ground was Alex Yi. He was so smart, so tactical with his racing. And we're going to head down now to Annie Emerson, who has Johnny Brownlee, who's been pipped at the post. Johnny Brownlee, uh, maybe disappointment, but third over all in the series. How are you feeling? Yeah, well, I'm disappointed today, obviously, because uh, I've been consistent about the whole series, but uh, I gave everything and uh, it was tough racing, but I'm, at the start of this, uh, someone told me I'd come third, I'd have taken that, so... Uh, yeah, a fair play to you, boy, as well. He absolutely smashed it. But, no, um, I'm just pleased to be competitive with these guys again. Disappointed today, but pleased overall. I don't use this word lightly, but it looked pretty brutal out there, particularly in the swim. <laughs> yeah, the swim wasn't really swimming. <laughs> it was just complete lottery of what wave you hit. And uh, I got no idea what happened in that first swim. All of a sudden, I was, near the, I was on near the front and everyone came past me. And then I was at the back. Um, yeah, it wasn't swimming out there. It was just whoever hit the wave and a bit of, bit of luck. But uh, they're just skills that I don't have. What was it like racing against Blumenfeld? Curious tactics from him when he went off the front in the first round. <laughs> yeah, well, it's Blumen, isn't it? He's brilliant. He, um, he, he can't ever not race, and that's, what, that's what's great about him. That's what you love. Uh, even in the first two rounds when he was easily safe, he still had to race, and uh, that's what makes him the athlete he is. So, yeah, keep it going. It's been tough, but how much have you enjoyed racing Super League over the last four weeks? Yeah, I've absolutely loved it, you know, back from where we started in London and when we were on the start line not knowing what to expect, to, you know, me feeling competitive to Jersey, which is probably one of the highlights of my career and feeling great then. Today was obviously a disappointment, but it is hard to be consistent throughout these all these different races and uh, so anyone who's, who's been on the podium deserves it, so I'm really, really pleased with that. Great stuff, Johnny Brownlee, third overall 2021 Super League Series. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations to Johnny, congratulations to Alex Yi, who in the end on the double points wins by five points. Fantastic effort from him, just got better and better across the course of the month. From Hayden Wilde, Johnny Brownlee, Velasa leapfrogs Vincent Lewis into fourth position. Martin Van Riel, well, he figured there with second, jumps himself into sixth, despite the fact that he didn't race in the first race. Seth Ryder, seventh, Kenji Nina, unlucky, uh, had to pull out early in this one. Matt Hauser took a short shoot but didn't figure at the back end. He comes ninth overall from Taylor Reed, whose swims led him to a top 10 position. And now we're going to go head back down to Kate, who is with a very smug, no doubt, Tim Don, who picked incredibly well in the SLT draft and is your team managing champion of the Eagles. Yes, here he is, Tim Don, and as is so like him, he's turning around to look at his team rather than taking any of the credit for himself. How are you feeling watching that, Tim? Oh, I'm exhausted, but, um, you know, the, the team competition here is, is deeper than winning. It's, um, you know, there were team tactics involved. People were getting points early on in London that meant so much later on. So the whole team came together and, and they grew throughout the series. And you can see that, you know, behind me. It's, um, yeah, it's really nice to be on the top of the podium, but they earned every, every point they earned. And your, your female Eagles did so incredibly, but you actually called out Victoria Lopez. I did. I mean, you know, she's got so many points, and I think that, that means a lot in this sport. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's deeper than the winners. They're, you can see that the, the camaraderie between all the athletes is amazing. And, you know, when you're picking a team, you need to look deeper than, than just the podium overall, and that's what we try to do with the Eagles. We just love seeing the emotion <laughs> that was surrounding both your team, obviously Alex just winning, then Jess falling at the final hurdle if you like but what a month she's had oh, i think jess is really up to game you know the olympics she, she walked away with a gold medal in the team relay but you know maybe in the individual she didn't have have the best race she, she went away to america did some training she came back hungry and she executed not once not twice but three times and to say she got beaten that's that, that that's tough but if anyone was going to beat her i think you think she'd be happy it was georgia taylor brown they're such good friends and training partners and um yeah it meant a lot to georgia but i know jess tomorrow will be proud of what she's achieved she certainly should be and i think it's the moment now for us to hand over to michael Dosser, co-founder of super league triathlon because he's got a big old check to present to you and your boys and girls oh brilliant come on then, guys come in come in <laughs> everyone come in <laughs> thank you 
Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everybody, everyone coming. What a sight for sore eyes. The Eagles have landed. They are the champions of the 2021 Super League Triathlon Championship Series. And my goodness, these athletes have wasted, waited two years for this and they have made the absolute most of it on this beautiful day in Malibu. The racing has been fast, it's been furious, it's been technical, and most of all, it's been a show of team spirit. Some incredible winners and some incredible team performances all in. And uh, there's not much left for us to say, but that we'll be back next year with the Super League Triathlon Championship Series, and we hope you will join us to celebrate these magnificent, these magnificent athletes. We got Tim Don back. He's not he's not spraying the champagne around yet. We got Annie Emerson here with us. We've got just a, two seconds at the end of this show just to to wrap it all up with a couple of words about what this has meant to you guys. Just breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking, and it's been the most exciting racing right down to the wire every ta time and roll on 2022 <laughs> roll on indeed congratulations everybody we'll see you next time